if you enjoy this new time, it could be the perfect time for me to test. Oh shit, the fuck. So, do I deserve it? You're there. Um, I think you're gonna have a phone charger, there it is. I'm so tired, man. Fucking hell. I really don't feel it tonight. Is it Gov.uk? I'm very flat. Who did that song? Uh, I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. I wish I had to go for another photo on the corner. I don't know. Additional pounds with 5.9% APR representative PCP finance. Search Jaguar sales event. Jaguar, the art of performance. Selected models only. Credit subject to status. UK 18 plus only. Terms and conditions apply. Black Horse Limited Trading is Jaguar Financial Services. 15% off all accessories. Purchased alongside a vehicle between the 6th and 8th of July 2018. Subject to availability. A participating retailers only. Across the UK. Online and on DAV. Talk radio. On the hour news headlines. From the Sky News Centre at 10 in breaking news as two people exposed to an unknown substance in Wiltshire remain critically ill in hospital. Police say there's been a significant update in the investigation. Metropolitan Police Assistant Commissioner Neil Basu who has been updating reporters in the last few minutes. The counter-terrorism policing network is now leading the investigation into this incident. This evening I've received test results from Portland Down that showed that the two people have been exposed to the nerve agent Novichok. That's the same one used to poison a former Russian spy and his daughter earlier this year in the same county. Also tonight, police say the male arrested on suspicion of murdering a girl on the Isle of Butte is under the age of 18. The body of six-year-old Alicia McPhail was discovered in Woodland on Monday morning. A huge fire on Saddleworth Moor that's been alight for a week and a half has been investigated as arson. Firefighters have been tackling the blaze in Greater Manchester in challenging weather conditions. Police say witnesses reported people were lighting a bonfire on the moorland on the 24th of June. The first emergency call to raise the alarm was made less than an hour later. Our correspondent Nick Martin says police want to speak to witnesses. To try and give them a steer as to whether they can get any information about who may have been lighting those bonfires in these conditions. I mean, they've been giving out warnings here for ages now not to have bonfires, not to have barbecues. In Sport England's World Cup penalty shootout was the most watched TV moment for six years. 24 million of us were watching as Eric Dyer struck the signs, winning spot kick against Colombia. In tennis, Serena Williams and Roger Federer both have third round matches to look forward to at Wimbledon. They were straight sets winners. And Janet Jackson has thanked her fans for their support after the death of her father. Joe Jackson passed away last Wednesday, aged 89. That's the latest from the Sky News Centre. I'm Annie Joyce. Across the UK, online and on DAV. Take a far out trip into the twilight zone of late night radio with Ian. <laughs> Unmissable late night radio with the original king of unconventional conversation. Make contact with Ian Lee. The late night alternative with Ian Lee on Talk Radio. Is how a story begins. Um, listen, if you have, if you are watching the staircase, if you have not seen the staircase, uh, uh, but plan to watch it, if you uh, plan or have started to listen to the uh, BBC Five Live uh, podcast, Beyond Reasonable Doubt, and you don't want spoilers, switch off for the next thirty minutes or so because um, we are talking the staircase, and we are going to assume that all of you have seen it and are up to date on it okay because we're going to talk about everything so if you if you're halfway through it if you don't want to know what happens 
um, then switch off now because we're going to talk about it. I saw the well, this was recommended to me ages ago. I think before it went on Netflix, The Staircase documentary about um, a, a trial, murder trial. Michael Peterson um, accused of murdering his wife, wife Kathleen. Um, and I was recommended it ages ago, and then it kind of appeared on Netflix, and I started watching it just before I went to New York the other week. And I got hooked, and uh, so I downloaded all of it onto my phone, which is lucky because Norwegian Airlines don't have any movies on their flights, guys. It's 2018. And so I watched it uh, uh, all the way out, and I finished it on the way back. And uh, Kath has kind of binge-watched it today. Um, it's a great series. I'd say it's three or four episodes too long. I, I think some of that court stuff goes on a little bit too long. But it's an amazing, and amazing story, okay? Incredible story. And so I tweeted, oh, I've enjoyed this. And loads of you, as you do, said, oh, Ian, you've got to listen to Beyond Reasonable Doubt, the uh, five live podcast series with Chris Warburton and um, and it looks into it and I, I looked at it and it's like I don't know how many episodes it is and I thought I don't think I can I can sit through that entire it's a it's a it's a tough story to sit through twice Catherine it's, it's well, a big and, old story yeah and and they are long it feels like long detailed episodes yeah it's the, quite the TV hard. is yeah having binged it in one and a half days the TV series I, definitely I, I I feel uh, I feel exhausted <laughs> um so I, I thought I can't listen to the whole podcast but the, but so I listened to the last couple of episodes one of which they have a recent interview with Michael Peterson and then I listened to the last episode, which I think was recorded at the event we did last year, the London Podcast Festival, All right. uh, where it's kind of like a recap. And I believe they are they are in the process of making at least another two episodes. So I listened to those. And I must admit, I have gone back and I've started. I'm only on episode one, I think. Yeah, episode one. I'm, I'm going to go through it again because the Staircase series, I think, is very biased in favour of Michael Peterson and the BBC despite the fact, you know, that, that, that we all know it's fake news and it's controlled by the Zionist paymasters. Um, no, I'm joking, of course. Um, it, it, the BBC podcast doesn't quite hint at that. Anyway, enough talking for me. Let's let's get, and I'm going to use the word expert, and he's going to dispel that immediately. Uh, from uh, BBC Five Live, it's Chris Warburton. But evening, Chris. How are you? I'm, I'm, how very, are you? I'm very well. How are you doing? You all right? I'm all right, yes. I'm very, very well. And it's weird for me as well, because we made this podcast about six months ago we yeah. finished doing it and i thought right that's it that's put to bed now and then all of a sudden i started hearing that it was going to be on netflix the original documentary of the staircase and i thought oh hello this this story is never going to end and it's good for us because yeah. obviously loads of people are now starting to listen to be on reasonable doubt and do you know i have heard that phone call that you started all of this with one or two times. I, I suspect um, you have, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, does it sound genuine to you, his um, voice? Now, listen, I'm, I'm going to ask you, the, you're not on the BBC tonight, Chris, you're on commercial, so I, 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 I want to know what you think. But but here, we think he's guilty as hell. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, um, I haven't, we haven't really said, right, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm so BBC, it just runs through my veins. Yeah. We, we deliberately haven't said no, of what course. we thought. And we have had so many people ask us over the past year or so. And, um, and I get why. But the part of the reason, I think, for why that was the case for us is because it would have just made life quite difficult when yeah. we were dealing with him, when we were dealing with his defence attorney, and then obviously dealing with people of the other persuasion as well. Um, you know, if we thought he was completely yeah. innocent and then we're going off and speaking to Kathleen's sister, then it, it makes life hard, right? Yeah, L listen, for those who don't know the story, can you just give us a brief background to, yeah. to, to, the, to, the, 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 mur to the, the death, let's see, I'm doing it, the death of yeah. Kathleen Peterson? Yeah. That's easily done. Um, well, on the face of it, it's a, it's a very simple story, and, and that's kind of the attraction, I think. So you've got a, a wealthy couple, a wealthy woman who live in a wealthy part of this uh, liberal enclave, if you like, in North Carolina, this city mm. of Durham. And uh, she is one night found at the bottom of the staircase of this huge mansion. It's pretty much the biggest house in town. And she's dead. There's blood everywhere. And the question is, was her death an accident? Had she simply fallen down the stairs? It's a very tight, narrow staircase. I've walked on that staircase myself. Wow. Or had she been killed? Had she been murdered? And specifically, the question is, had she been murdered by her husband, Michael? And the way Michael tells it, just to give both sides of it... Yep. 
he and Kathleen, they were hanging out by the pool, they were drinking wine, as they often did, they were living the high life, and they were celebrating a possible movie deal for one of his novels, and the argument from Michael is that she had had one too many drinks, she went back into the house, and uh, she tripped on her way up one of the staircases, they had two staircases in that house, mm. fell, hit her head, and uh, bled out is probably the best way of putting it. But the other side yeah. say the law enforcement, the prosecutors believe that Michael beat Kathleen to death at the foot of the stairs. Uh, they, she, he bludgeoned her with an instrument, um, you know, the blow poke uh, that we hear so yes. much about. And then you get into why that might have been. And I don't know if you want me to get into all of well, that now. Because, well, you know, let, let, let's, let's, let's describe, we will do. Yeah, let's just, I mean, the, the, the thing is, just to paint the, the, the picture, there is an amazing amount of blood there. There is, and, and the blood spatters are an integral part of the story because yeah. both sides say, well, it could, it could mean it was a bludgeoning, it could mean it was a... There is an amazing amount of blood. She has, is it six or seven lacerations to the skull? The skull isn't damaged, the brain isn't impacted, but there are huge lacer lacerations. And so a lot of people are left scratching their chins going... It, it, it looks like a very bloody mess for a fall. And considering yeah. she's supposed to have only fallen down three steps. Yeah. Well, yeah, but the idea is because she was drunk, because she lost her bearings, she's fallen down the steps, she started to bleed, but then she's pulled herself back up again in this very tight, narrow area. She slipped on her own blood. She's fallen again. She's got more lacerations on her head as a result of that. That is the argument right now, if you want to believe it. But you're right. The difficulty that most people who come to this story have is the amount of blood. You know, there's blood all over the floor. There's blood all over the walls. There's blood on the ceilings. There's blood on the insides of, outside of Michael Peterson's shorts. And I've spoken to one of the jurors, yeah. right? All of the other stuff that came the way of the jury during the trial, some of which, as you know, and part of the attraction of this story, because it's so extraordinary, mm. she said, she said, none of that mattered diddly squat right it was the amount of blood when the jury were taken to that house um on a you know specific visit to go and see it it was that level of blood which convinced her and that she just said i didn't need anything else now one of one of the things that I, um I I, I I i spotted from the series really early on and i did uh, the staircase series not your podcast is, and i didn't read yeah. about it but i spotted really early on i thought this is totally weighted in favor of michael peterson the the the, the you know, first of all, it's very odd that that early on into a murder investigation, there's a film crew hanging around, and it turns out they're a French film crew. But also, from episode one, I'm thinking, nah, this is this is very heavily biased. And some of the titles of the episodes, yeah. Prosecution Trickery, The Prosecution's Revenge. I mean, the prosecution yeah, yeah. are definitely the enemy, aren't and, they? And, and you're, you're saying, Chris, that they're... Well, I, I know from what I've heard from the few episodes of the po your podcast, Beyond Reasonable Doubt, is quite a lot of stuff was left out of the staircase. Well, yeah, and, and look, let me say, I think as a piece of filmmaking, it's it's a superb piece of work in terms of the way it's laid out to you, some beautiful filming, they're fantastic filmmakers, the access is amazing, it's gripping, the music score is sensational, it yeah. really hooks you in. But the point is, you're right, loads of people have said this to us, but I guess if, you're, if your MO is I'm going to spend all of our time with the family, with the accused, then surely coming down on his side is in a sense going to be inevitable. And we saw that for ourselves, you know, when we went over to Durham a couple of times, we saw Michael Peterson just completely coincidentally once having lunch outside of Delhi and he was with the French film crew. They're happy as Larry, having a few glasses of wine together and all the rest of it. But it's what's left out and what is left out Go on. are interviews I think, with those people who believe that Michael Peterson killed Kathleen Peterson. So, Candice Samperini, as an example. That's right, Kathleen's, that's Kathleen's that's sister. Kathleen's sister. Kathleen's sister who has, above anybody else, you know, dealt with the emotion of the loss of her sister um, over the years. And it's been 
absolutely horrendous for her. And we see her right at the end of the staircase when she gave her, gave her oh. victim impact statement in Chris, court. Chris, stay there. Listen, I've been learning because yeah, the, the podcast is so slick. Stay there. We've got a bit of that. So this is right at the very, very last episode, spoiler alert, guys, when um, uh, um, uh, Michael pleads guilty under a kind of weird little legal loophole, which we'll get to. And Candice is allowed to stand up and make a witness statement. This is the beginning. It's an incredible bit of television. This is the first sort of minute, 30 seconds. Good morning. I'm Candace Zambrini, Kathleen's other sister. Two months after Kathleen's death, my husband, Laura, and I drove in February 2002 for the first time to meet with District Attorney Jim Harden. I didn't want to believe she'd been murdered. I was sure this was an accident. At the end of the meeting, Jim Harden asked if I wanted to see the autopsy pictures and some crime scene photos. He handed me a large envelope. It was my Pandora's box. All the evils of my sister's death leaped into my eyes. The horrors of my sister's beating were shown. The assaulting of her body. Instead of leaving me with Pandora's hope, what was left in the envelope for me was to bear the responsibility to witness and fight for justice. Learning the truth and agony of Catherine's prolonged death, her autopsy states over 35 cuts, bruises, wounds, contusions all around her body, she was strangled, and the seven death blows to the back of her head causing her to bleed slowly to death. The next confrontation came from a French film company that wanted to make a pseudo documentary about my sister's murder without my family's cooperation or consent. Michael Peterson would have a movie made that he could pontificate. He could tell everyone, all of you, how incompetent the Durham police and justice system was. He could proclaim this film again as complete innocence. The Syracuse film was made, and twice episodes were used to threaten and scare Catherine's daughter and myself. Michael Peterson states in the film, if not for Candace and Caitlin, I would not be here in a courtroom. And in episode eight, filmed in the courtroom, Michael Peterson again clearly says, Candace just can't keep her mouth shut. I don't think I'd be here if she shut her mouth. And, and it, it goes, it is a, it's an amazingly brave speech that she gives. Um, uh, 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 sorry, just go back to the point you're going to say in a second, but she mentions there that, that um, Catherine was strangled, and that doesn't get mentioned. That doesn't get mentioned. That doesn't get mentioned a huge amount in court, though, to be fair. Right, okay. You know, that, 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 that is one of those tricky areas. I mean, I think it, it came as a part of the autopsy, but wasn't used extensively in court, okay. as far as I remember, but I don't exactly remember why. I mean, the point is, you hear there, right? I was in court and I saw that. Wow. And the, the power that she was taking from that situation where she was stood literally meters away from the man who she believed had killed her sister. And this was the opportunity to look him in the eye and say what you just heard there. It was such a powerful moment. I went outside and I was part of the scrum that interview directly afterwards. She has had, as you rightly said, Ian, uh, when we were emailing each other, sorting this out, you said, "I can't believe the grief that she's had on social media." Oh, you Google her. You Google her name. You Google her name, and it's all oh, this stupid bitch. What does she know? Yeah. She's she's coming. I'm looking at our YouTube comments now. People watching the show now saying, "Oh, she was a bit crazy." Uh, excuse me. Yeah. She believed this man had murdered her sister, and no one was taking it seriously. That moment where she she's talking there, and you can hear it in the audio. But when you see it as well, she is shaking with yeah. rage, and she still manages to deliver that speech. I thought she was incredible. Quite. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. You know, she believed this man killed her sister. And all those people who are saying she's a bit crazy, put yourself into mm. that position. You know, even if she's right or wrong, it's what she believes, OK? And you, I'm sure, would probably do the same. Um, we, there, there, are, there are other things that don't get there mentioned. The, the don't get the documentary. The yeah. fact that, that Michael Peterson has a a, a, a a very long relationship with one of the film crew. That to me, That's when right. you you told me that, then I looked it up online, and it was it's it's out there. People know it. That seemed incredible. Well, we didn't know this absolutely for sure when we first went over there, but we we started hearing rumours about it. We were speaking to some of the other media, the local TV media who had just been following it in a kind of news way for years, and they said, "Oh, you know that Michael Peterson." had a thing with one of the French film crew. 
we were like okay and then it was totally confirmed for us so he found love with a woman called Sophie Brené, who's the series editor. And as you see, they dated for a few years. And the director of The Staircase, he's confirmed it, Jean-Yves de Lestrade. And he's just said, you know, it's one of those things. But there is an <laughs> absolute... I know, exactly. But, but there is no possible way that would have affected her editing of that programme. Now, wow. you know, you make your own judgment on that. But it's the very fact, I think, that... If that's the case, and if that's what you believe, right, then wouldn't you, as a filmmaker, declare it just mm. for your kind of journalistic integrity? I wonder, Chris, else? I wonder, Chris, and I don't say this flippantly, I wonder if that's a French thing. If it's a French thing that, you know, that, you know, but you hear stories about the French being slightly more open about romantic endeavours. Whereas, if, of course, if you're working for well, the BBC, you'd be fired immediately. I remember when Mitterrand <laughs> was found to have been having a rela an extramarital relationship, but um, people didn't care until they started paying for the yeah. mistress and the, and the love well, child. I, I, I was going to say, don't say that too loudly, because my wife's in the house, and oh. uh, I work as the assistant editor of Five Live, so, you know, <laughs> I think they probably worked it out by now, but anyway, there you Well, we know Michael Peterson <laughs> is very open-minded in these affairs. Um, you, you met Peterson. It was the, the first episode of your show I listen to and by the way could, could, we'll, we'll give full props to the team that make it because it's it's superbly put together it sounds great it's well done Buddha. yeah well it's Wise Buddha and Five Live coming together it sounds great it. and um but you met him and um uh what was how did you find because he was aware of you wasn't he well it was very odd because we had been working on this for quite some time and the whole sort of nature of the podcast and you know what podcasts can be like and this is kind of how we wanted it to be was as a listener you're you're following it as we're making it mm. in a sense so the production process was completely open and as we were making it we were putting in bids to speak to michael peterson as we would call it you know opportunities to get an interview and they were generally through his defense attorney david rudolph and we were constantly just told no 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 thanks very much he's looking to the future and um, uh, you know and when we were, we thought well okay we'd kind of accept that but then we would see him pop up doing interviews elsewhere and we'd think well he's not really looking to the future <laughs> is he so we'll put in another <laughs> bid and we kept on being told no and then we got talking to another journalist locally in Durham who told us where he lived and then we had this kind of dilemma because if it was a if it was a news story because I'm grounded in news really and if mm. it was a news story a developing news story or whatever you would go and do a doorstep right so you would you would stop them in the street and start asking them questions with a mic out we didn't really want to do that because I wouldn't really think there was the justification for that in this situation and he's he's in his early 70s yeah. and you know he's probably not on so we instead waited in the car park next to his apartment we went and knocked on the door he wasn't there i came outside to do a little stand-up piece just to explain what had happened to record for the podcast and then he turned up in his car so i didn't go along with a mic i just went over put my hand out to shake his hand told him who i was where i was from and he called me a melon farmer or something like that and uh, we got into a bit of a heated argument wow. and that was quite interesting because we had been told as well by his defence lawyer uh, in a previous interview that he had never seen a flash of anger mm. they were the words yeah. I, def I definitely saw a flash of really? anger what was, he argue what was he arguing about? he thought that we had been unfair in his treatment of him right. in the early podcast episodes but then it turned out that he'd only heard one episode anyway right. and i think he was basically getting this off other people who had heard it um we then placated him a little bit and we arranged to come along the next day to interview him at his apartment neither of us mark my producer and i uh thought that he was going to be there but we turned up and he was and um you know, it was weird. I'd spent so many months of my life dedicated to this guy, and then all of a sudden, I'm sat opposite him. It's a great interview. And it's a great interview. Partly because you sound a little bit nervous, and it's really refreshing to hear, um, you know, and I don't know if you were nervous, maybe I'm putting my own thing on it, but it's really refreshing to hear someone a little bit nervous, but, but also, you're asking him the tough questions and allowing him to speak. It's a cracking bit of audio. Cheers, man. I appreciate that. I mean, I, I did feel a bit nervous. I think I did because... I knew that he is a bright, quite tricky character, mm. and I knew that in respect of our listeners who had already got there, because he's quite deep into the podcast, as you say, they would want the questions 
that they have been posing to us put in the right way to him. You yeah. know, they wouldn't want me, they wouldn't want to think we were just giving him a soft ride and off we went, thanks very much indeed, at least we got the interview. So I felt the kind of pressure of that to a degree. Um, did you hear the beginning of the interview where we basically asked him what he had thought of the podcast? Yeah. Which, um, <laughs> just, you know, it was just crazy because he had gone away that night. He binged it. He binged it. He <laughs> thing. I was thinking, where were you up to, man? He was been listening to it till about three or four in the morning or something. But um, yeah, and he was obviously deeply critical. But but that's fine. We we found that okay. And um, you know, it was quite a spiky, quite a tense affair. But it was. It was, it was very interesting. And, I, and the thing I, I, I asked him why people think he's guilty. And there was a li- really long pause. That was the bit. And he said, well, the amount of blood, people are overwhelmed yeah. by that. And he talked about the autopsy pictures, the laceration, lacerations to the head and said how shocked he was by those terrible injuries. And, you know, he, he got to the very root of why a lot of people doubt him ultimately. Go on, Catherine. I was going to say that but I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine what it must, must be like to be sort of studying a case and then being sitting face to face with someone who actually has always been in the driving seat. That's something that really came across to me mm. while I was watching uh, The Staircase is that this is a man who knew exactly what was going to happen and was right in the middle of orchestrating everything that was said in that courtroom. Yeah, uh, yeah you're absolutely right. And I mean, but the, but the point is on that as well, the orchestration thing. He and the film crew following him everywhere. He talks repeatedly about the media being against him, you know, it turning into a media circus, all that kind of thing. Yet, he was there trying to orchestrate the event. He had a film crew following him around everywhere. So it kind of feels a little bit rich in that respect. Do you know how how that came about, Chris? Because the film crew were there pretty early on in the proceedings. How did that relationship start? Well, there was some suggestion that... um, one of the film crew had known him in the past because he went to Duke University, but that was refuted. Um, I think it was a tip-off. They had been looking for another case because they had already been doing another case in America. And what I think they were initially trying to show was the contrast in the way that the legal system can help or be of... Um, you know, difficulty to people based on their income levels in America. Oh, yeah. So they've oh, already yeah. done one st- story following a, a story of a, a, a poor person who had basically been accused of murder. Um, and that had done very, very well, and it had won an Oscar. And on the flip side, they were trying to find the story of somebody with wealth right. who had found themselves in that situation. I can't, for the life of me, remember exactly how they came across mm. the pieces of the story. But they were on the search something like that if you see what i mean a- any other things any other big things that were, were missed out of the the tv documentary the staircase um i think probably go on <laughs> you you wanted me to go down this line well I, if, if that's the line you want to go down I just just tread carefully as you know you know my recent history but yeah go on go down I that do, line i do so there was a theory that we didn't know a huge amount about having watched The Staircase. I think there might be one mention of it. I'm not even sure because I watched it so long ago. I've watched the recent episodes, um, you know, the three yeah. new episodes uh, in the last couple of months. But the original Staircase I haven't gone back to for a long time. But there is a theory that was the brainchild of the Peterson's neighbour, a lawyer called Larry Pollard. And the theory is described as owl theory. Okay. Okay. Go carefully. Go carefully. Are you all right? I'm all right. right? I'm all right, Chris. I'm all right. I think I I need to face this. Okay. All right. So the theory is that an owl swooped down and struck Kathleen's head and that it cut her scalp with its talons. She then fled inside the house, but because she had been drinking, she fell down the stairs and blacked out. Michael then found her lying at the bottom of the stairs. So it's a similar story uh, to the original defence case, but it involves the intervention of an owl. And there is the early stages. there is evidence because she was clutching feathers, wasn't she? And it, there was there was and there were some feathers in her hair. There, there were there were some minute minute um, you know elements of feather right. uh, yeah. in her hair, and I think one around her hand yeah 
So, you know, that feeds into it. And I'll tell you what, if you speak to Larry Pollard, the guy who's behind this, you have never seen a man more passionate about a theory in your life. They had been um, seen on sun lounges, though, hadn't they? Quite, I, quite padded ones. I, the thing is, I heard this, like, for those who don't know, I was attacked by an owl last week. And I heard this episode, uh, I read about this after... I'd, um, I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd yeah. been attacked, mm. uh, obviously. And, um, uh, and I tweeted about it. And now David Rudolph, get this, Chris, this proves what a genius this man is. He retweeted my owl so attack that. story. Yeah, so and that. now he follows me. He follows me on Twitter, oh, which is incredible. Could provide him with some top evidence. Uh, but I loved it. The last episode of Chris's, po- the, the last episode so far, we'll talk about more coming out in a second, but it, it's, it's, it's done in front of an audience. And, y- you know, me and Kath have stood in front of an audience, Chris, and said, right, any questions? Silence. Not a hand up. As soon as he mentioned our theory, you could hear the hands going up. He going, yeah, yeah, no, I'd just like to say. And it got, it was the bit that got everyone talking. Silence for the rest of it, but that. <laughs> It, it is the absolute <laughs> bit that everybody wants to talk to me about the entire time. Everybody messaged me about it. And we said, look, when we were talking about it, we said, can we, should we really dedicate an entire episode to this? We did. Yeah. And then we got so many questions that when we went back to Durham, we put a load of those questions to Larry Pollard, the guy who came up with it. But I've got to tell you this little bit. Yeah. He was very kind, very generous, lovely guy. Uh, his wife, Brenda, is tremendous as well they invited us in you know proper kind of north carolina people and they put water they invited mark and i into the house can i interest you gentlemen in some water yes please thank you very much they took us into a, a little living room and there's larry and he's holding a stuffed owl well played. in his hand well played. And he, turns, he turns to mark and i and just says gentlemen meet the killer what? kathleen peterson <laughs> oh my god that was it. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I'm serious. I'm oh serious. man, um, David Ru- Rudolph. What, what's what's he like? Because I've got a, a real admiration for him throughout the entire show. He's doing his job. He's doing his gig. His gig is to keep this fella out of prison. And he he, he seems like a real um, like an old fashioned entertainer. And despite the fact that they take great delight in taking the Mickey out of him. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He uh, he is massively polite very successful lawyer i think he's been in the top 50 lawyers in america for something like the last 20 years he's got great pedigree he's had a lot of very high profile cases and we described him quite a lot of the time as a showman right and that is the kind of lawyer he is he's very slick he's very kind of knowing with the jury he wants to try and get them on his side the whole time and the thing that made again there's so many different aspects of this case the just add into the pot if you like he was facing in the opposite corner the da a guy called jim hardin who was ex-military a real local boy done good you know had that soft-spoken southern charm and they could not possibly have been more different and that just added to the whole thing as well the court drama of it all david rudolph you know he invited us uh to interview him when we first went and did it um, I don't know. As time went by, did he take against a little bit? I'm not sure. I don't know. Mm. But we've come again to do an interview with us for his latest two episodes. We had to go through Netflix for that. It was all agreed. Wow. We were meant to be interviewing him again about three days ago. And then he pulled out of the interview. Um, and I don't know why that is. I don't know if your owl attack's got anything to do with it. <laughs> I, I, if so, I can only apologise. But it, I, the bloody, it's mentioned very briefly in the show, it, and I thought he was mentioning it as a joke. He, right near the end, he goes, "What did, did she fall down the stairs? I, I can't say for sure. Was she murdered? I can't say for sure. Was it a raptor that attacked her? I, I just don't know. And, and that's the only mention of it in the series. You, two more episodes coming out, Chris. You got two. When are, what's happening with those of your um, series, Beyond Reasonable Doubt, the podcast? When are those coming out? Uh, They're going to come out on July 16th. That's the plan. That's what we're doing. We're speaking to people at the moment, one of whom, someone who we were trying to get for a long time, who we featured briefly but only in written form earlier on in the series, is Michael Peterson's sister, Anne, who is absolutely terrified of Michael, believes that he murdered not just one but two women, that's something we haven't got into. Oh, God, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, we, we 
we had a long conversation with her to see if she would come on the record and talk to us. And she finally has oh, wow. uh, with her views about him. So you're going to hear that. Incredible. Uh, you're going to hear some of Jean-Yves de Lestrade's views on our podcast as well. He's going to be on the podcast. So that's, that's the French, that's the, the director of the staircase. Yeah. Wow, yeah, this is who, very meta. Who has, has, it's very, and it gets even more meta, let me tell you, because <laughs> he always rejected an interview with us. Yeah. And then the strangest thing happened that we found out one day, and this is, <laughs> it just adds to the whole thing again. He ended up agreeing to do an interview with another Five Live program, uh, which is called The Heat Map, and it's presented by the BBC's arts editor, Will Gompertz, you know, Will yeah. Gompertz with the hair and the glasses and yes, all of that. Oh, yes. And he, he very kindly did an interview with Jean-Yves de Lestrade, told him that, you know, it would go elsewhere in the BBC and that was fine, but he probably didn't necessarily think that it might be our oh, podcast as well. So, um, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite naughty for the BBC. I like that. Well, it's, 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 it's honest. No, it's honest, of course. We didn't, we didn't pull the wood over his eyes. So, wow. um, so there it is. But Will's a big fan of the podcast and the show as well, which helps. So that was good. So two new episodes and uh, uh, coming out in uh, July. And very quickly, because I, I could talk to you all night. Let's, a couple more minutes. The, 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 We've not even mentioned the Blowpoke. Well, the, we'll get to the Blowpoke. <laughs> great band in the 70s. I've got both their yeah, albums yeah, on vinyl. Yeah. But but yes, no, we forgot to mention. And for those who don't know the story, here's the thing. Where the, here's the bit for me where I went, oh, he's definitely guilty. A sec, he was, he was nearby when a second woman was found dead about 20 years before at the foot of the stairs with the same lacerations in the head, the same blood spattered every, he was there! So that's, that's, to, to have one woman fall down the stairs and kill herself in your charge is bad luck. To have two? I mean, that's gotta be some sort of suspicion. Also, there. and this is something no one's really mentioned. <laughs> They all look the same. Yeah, they do. And if yeah, you look, well, that, look at that S- Sophie Burnett, whatever her name is, she looks like them too. Yeah, yeah. Well, they were, they were, because the, the woman you're talking about, this is in Germany, it was Michael Peterson's friend, Elizabeth Rapp, they're found dead or washed with blood at the bottom of a staircase in Germany 16 years earlier. Originally ruled an accident, but during the Peterson trial, you'll remember her body was exhumed and her death determined to have been caused by blunt force trauma. And as you said, Michael Peterson the last person to see each woman alive and in fact i was listening back to the interview with the da that we did during our podcast earlier on today and just like i do that makes it sound like i'm just thinking (laughs) oh i listen to another episode of the podcast but um you know he said yeah elizabeth ratliff looks like kathleen peterson and actually he went on to say and both of them looks like look like michael peterson's mother oh god Wowzers. Um, Chris, uh, it's such a, it's such a thrill to have your man, and thank you so much for coming on. Where, where, the, it's been great. where are the best places to get Beyond Reasonable Doubt, your, your podcast? You can either go through the Five Live website, which is easy enough, or you can download, we're meant to say from any of your other favourite podcast uh, providers, uh, but iTunes are good, aren't they? Yeah, well, iTunes, iTunes do the, <laughs> they do the top. Music. And two new episodes yeah. coming out on the 16th, and, and we should let you know, by the way, this is exciting, we have, we've got a new um, political medical correspondent at Talk Radio, Mr Dwayne Deaver will be working here in, the, oh, yeah, in a couple of weeks' time, so that's oh, exciting. Well, that good. <laughs> yeah, well, it's out of work, so that's handy for him as well. <laughs> oh, Chris, I could talk to you all night, we didn't get to talk yeah. about Beyond Fury, we get, didn't get to talk about Diva, all these wonderful characters. Um, I, I've, I've listened to three of your episodes, I'm going to dive in and enjoy the rest, and uh, best of luck with it, man. Thanks so much for coming hey, on. listen, thank you for having me on, it's been a real pleasure, so I really appreciate it, and I hope you enjoy it if you do get this to it. But Cheers, thanks Chris. a lot, guys. Thanks a lot, man, take care, thank you very much. It's Chris Warburton from BBC Five Live, little hands at the, our sister station there, BBC Five Live. Uh, his show's great, it's um, uh, Beyond Reasonable Doubt, um, and, uh, it, it's great because it really gives a, 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 I think from the three I've heard, I've only heard three, but I think it gives a much fuller picture in a way that, and I know this is unfashionable to say in a way that only the BBC can. All right, guys, and the, the old BBC bias, I, I don't buy any of that. It, it, it's, it's own, the, the show is done in a way that only the BBC could do. And it's a cracking listen. It's put together superbly you know if you've listened to serial and all of that kind of stuff it's it's up there with that in the style of production it's absolutely great and two more episodes coming soon hopefully with less vocal fry <laughs> we don't need a top like that <laughs> but what i mean what a case and, and 
And while we're getting... Oh, we didn't ask him if he thought he was guilty or not! Oh, Chris, you us. got away with that! He's never gonna tell us. That was gonna be the humdinger last question. I got a few little hints in there, <laughs> uh, Well, I, I, I'll show you the emails he said. Um, <laughs> but I think to totally, totally, he totally murdered those two women. Now, the thing with the blowpoke... Yes. For those who don't know what a blow poke is, right? I didn't until today. Well, I didn't. So basically, it's like a poker for a fire, but you, you blow down it. it. And uh, I've never heard of it before. Why would you want to blow in a poker? I know you. Yeah, but it's made of metal and it's going to be hot. Like you imagine if you sucked. You know. Anyway, so that was the, apparently the murder weapon. Yeah. And all the way through it, people are trying to find where this blow poke's gone. Uh, one of the daughters is looking through all the family videos, trying to find bits where the blow poke is featured in the background yeah. of things. She's noting them all down. And towards the end of the um, series, a blow poke emerges. They just find it. But what was oh. it that they found out in the podcast? Oh yeah, that they bought. He bought three blow pokes during the during trial. The trial. Didn't mention. Forgot. It, it, honestly, I could have spoken to Chris all night, and I hope you enjoyed that, dear listener. If if um if you switched off to avoid the spoilers, you can switch on again now. They won't know. Hey, geez, that's the joke. This is the Late Night Alternative with Ian and Catherine on Talk Radio. Ah, uh, he was radio. good. The I don't know who he was. Dial up and talk radio. We'll get you got so much, though, the whole... Big story of the day on Talk Radio with the Times. Know your Times. Every weekday from 6.30, join Julia Hartley Brewer for in-depth analysis of the morning headlines. Don't just be informed. Um, you send the one, I'll send the one. With fearless debate and in-depth opinion from right across the political spectrum. Join me, Julia Hartley Brewer, for the biggest breaking current affairs stories, top guests and razor sharp reaction. Get a better quality conversation. Station at breakfast. Yeah, the big story of the day with Julia Hartley Brewer on Talk Radio with the Times. Know your Times. We got it at Selco. Selco, it's where the trade go. At Selco Builders Warehouse, we've got real deals on a wide range of trade quality building products. In July, we've got Leyland 10 litre mat emulsion for only £7.49 each expat. Now that's a real deal. We've got it all. Real deals at Selco Builders Warehouse. Oh, I don't know. Philip Schofield here. I love that with WeBuyAnyCar.com, uh, you could find out what the cars were in 60 seconds. You go and get Alan Caddick, so then you can get back to doing whatever you were doing, like your hedge trimming. You can't see, but I've sculpted a flamingo mid-flight, and I'm pretty pleased with it. To find out how much your car's worth in 60 seconds, enter your reg number now at webuyanycar.com. Admiralty may apply. For more information, see webuyanycar.com slash info. Is now your baby's feeding time? Maybe it's your sorting through some bills time. Yeah, he was great. That or was good. That was fun. If you're enjoying some you time, it could be the perfect time to renew your Good people who know what they're talking about and know how to talk. Your world isn't nine to five. That's such a change So neither is ours. That's why you can renew your tax credits online, day or night. Do yeah, it now. Not. Visit gov.uk. That's our sister station, tax five live. credits now. That's our sister station. At Green Flag, we think the AA are great. The They've won yeah. bucketfuls of awards. They'll give you unlimited call-outs when you get in a pickle. Mmm, pickle. And they cover 100% of the UK. Very good indeed. So, why do we think that is so great? Because Green Flag do all of this too. And we'll have you AA renewal quote. Green flag. Common sense to the rescue. There may be a charge for call-outs with the same problem. Savings based on our closest equivalent UK vehicle cover for vehicles 10 years and under. T's and C's apply. Stimulating nightly emissions guaranteed to open your eyes and your mind. Oh, my word. The Late Night Alternative with Ian Lee on Talk Radio. Thank you, Chris, from our sister station, BBC Room 5 Live. It was nice to have a professional on. Very rare on talk radio, we get a professional on. Very, very rare. And tonight, guys, we had a, we had a little whiff of one. Thank you, Chris. Uh, you can watch this, this TV series, The Staircase, on Netflix. And, um, Chris's, uh, show is beyond reasonable doubt. And it's, um, uh, it's just, it's, it's a really good story. Really well told. You know, that's, that's all it is. Um, you can call in about that, your theories if you want, or you can call in about absolutely anything you want. This is the late night alternative. You know the drill, guys. We sit here and talk rubbish, and you pick up the phone and give us a call. 0344 499 1000. Good evening, Alan. Hi, Mark. Hello, Alan. Gardica. It's Alan Gardica. All the way from Italy. What are you like? An ice cream? Uh, 
Uh, near politics. Oh, this is what we'll do. Is it still July the 4th? Yes, yes it, it is. is. Right. So, here's what we're gonna do, Alan. Yeah. Every sucker that calls up this show is going to have to do an American accent to celebrate July the 4th, Independence Day from those British shitbags. Well, get up, you horse, and drink your milk. Okay, I said an American accent. What do you do, John Wayne? Do an American accent, for God's sakes, you piece of trash. I was trying to do John Wayne. Okay, that's better. I'm going to talk like that. Okay. You're going to go New York. That's better. I'm, I'm going all over the place, baby. I'm going all <laughs> over the place. What are you caught in for tonight, Alan Caddick? Well, we wanted to talk about last night. In an American accent, you son of a gun. Don't forget the rules, Alan Caddick. I'm sorry, I was down the West Coast. I was down the West Coast, and I was watching last night's soccer, and I feel sorry for those poor English people being put for the ringer. I can't understand a word he's saying. This guy, you're watching the soccer, and the English people were being put through your ringer? Because it was penalties. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, the penalties. That was some crazy... Hang on a minute. What are, we talking, what, are we, what are we talking about football for? We don't care about football on this show. We're a football-free zone. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah, cool, cool. You, Alan, how long have you been listening to me before? I'm tempted to call the police on you again. Well, I wouldn't mind going for another trial. Yeah, I bet you'd love it, eh? Considering I won the last one. All right, mate, shut your face. Uh, you, you've been listening to me for years, Alan. You know I have literally zero interest uh, Don La Fusbal. Well, you wouldn't be telling if we win the World Cup. Yes, I, yes, I, will. I, I, I will. I can guarantee you will. I actually will. What about tennis? Here's, I couldn't oh. give a stuff. Here's the thing, right? One of the papers, where are the papers? I thought you brought them in. No, of course I didn't bring them I in. Got them oh, them. Well, get them, get them during news. Don't need them now. Get them during news. But here's the thing. One of the papers was like, um, everyone in the UK is, or, or maybe it was online, one of the online things. Everyone in the UK was excited about the, the th no, they weren't. Trust me, they weren't. Honestly, I could not give a stuff and it really annoys me everybody should get behind our boys no i don't like the sport i've got nothing against them personally i don't like the sport it's it's boring and also i don't like national pride i don't get national pride we're not the english race oh yeah everyone that was the line everyone watch the moment everyone in the uk celebrates england's win um, uh, I don't think uh, all of the Scots were, or all of the Welsh, or, or, or all of the Northern Irish, Irish, and certainly not all of the English. Even Theresa May was celebrating. No, she wasn't. She's doing the May. She was too uh, busy. Uh, uh, she was too busy um, b b b saying sorry for voting against LBGT rights. No, when she opened Prime Minister's question today, she congratulated the Who English cares? Of course they have to, because cause they have to, because they have to pretend that they appeal to the common people. Alan, uh, football is rubbish, national pride is rubbish. I hate it. Oh, there's a video of one of the Mitchell brothers topless celebrating it. So what? He looks like an egg. This is talk radio. Across the UK, <laughs> online, and on mean, TV. It looks like an egg. We have ways of making you talk. This is for a dad, a brother, a nan. This is for a friend, a neighbour, a colleague. This is for the thousands of people living with cancer. This summer, do something incredible and brave the shave for Macmillan Cancer Support. Get sponsored by friends and family to shave your hair. <laughs> and you'll help Macmillan support even more people with cancer so they can live life as fully as they can. For everyone and every reason, by Braving the Shave, you'll be doing something amazing. Sign up today at bravetheshave.org.uk. The crowd is electric. There's a real air of anticipation today. And here it comes, our midfield general, the new Hyundai Tucson Go Edition SUV. Proving that it's equipped to deal Wind. with anything. Packed with extra kit, including sat-nav with live traffic updates to help you stay on the ball. Plus our ever-present five-year unlimited mileage warranty to keep you match fit. But football fan or not, with Hyundai, Thank you, you can all make the most of our World Cup Tucson Go Edition. Discover more at Hyundai.co.uk. Warranty T's and C's apply. For everyone who wants more from their Wi-Fi. For everyone who wants to binge watch box sets all day long. For everyone who's been stung by unexpected broadband price hikes. Talk Talk has your back. Because our faster fibre comes with our promise of no mid-contract price rises and includes our no, all new no, Wi-Fi no, hub. With our fastest, strongest, most reliable signal yet. All for just £25.50 a month for 18 months. Search Talk Talk Fibre. Talk Talk for everyone. 
Thirty pounds set up fee. Contracts and conditions apply. Forget history. Step in. Just show that easy. Forget the years of hurt. Please make your record. Forget the red carpet. Forget the missed tackles. Forget the brilliance. Forget being an underdog. Forget every game that has gone before, because all that matters is now. The 2018 FIFA World Cup on ITV. When the McCulloch man mows his lawn with his McCulloch <laughs> lawnmower, <laughs> he powers through even the toughest grass with one goal in mind to finish the job before the match starts. And with his McCulloch lawnmower, he's got the power to get the job done. That's why his mates envy his lawn as well as his team. Get your McCulloch lawnmower and other garden power tools at good DIY stores nationwide or at McCulloch.com. McCulloch, the power to get the job done. Done. A star-crossed soapbox for sailor boys, <laughs> oh. stable girls, oh, on the end. and stripper grands. It depends who you live and it depends on the situation. Late Night Speech Radio with a difference. Thank you. The Late Night Alternative with Ian Lee on Talk Radio. I, don't, I hate all this. I hate national pride. Why, why should I be proud of the bit of rock that I'm, we're, we're, we're not a, a, an English race? We're a human race, aren't we, guys? Like this, this na- national pride. Oh, you're proud to be British. Well, do you know, two hundred people died in the sea the other day, two days ago, trying to get to Europe. You know, two hundred people died in the sea, uh, trying to get to Europe, and we're going. Oh yeah, football. We scored some men scored. A goal. Okay, I'm, I'm more concerned about the poor souls. I've got more affiliation with the poor souls fleeing from Libya uh, who d- drowned in the sea than I've got for those idiots kicking a footballer. Honestly, I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less. Although, without immigration, we'd only have one, two, three, four, five footballers. There we go. There we go. Um, good evening, Donald Trump. Hello. Hello. I would just like to wish everybody across the world a happy 4th of July. Happy 4th, I wish. Happy 4th. Okay. How was your day going, Ian? <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst Donald Trump I've ever heard! This is the worst radio show I've ever heard. No, no, fair play. Touche, sir. Touche. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, I'm, I'm fine. What are you doing for the 4th of July, um, Donald? Trump? I'm currently ringing you. Okay. Anything else? Hmm? I've just... My life has been building up to this moment. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's fantastic. And what, 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 did you have any fireworks? Did you have anything nice to eat? It's like I'm talking to a shy child. I had lots of nice food to eat. I had lots of nice food. It was really nice. Okay, really thank nice. you very much. It's like, you know, when you, get, you can put that down there. You know, when you get shy children that don't really want to talk and you kind of feel obliged to yeah. talk to them and you, that's like, oh man. That's what that Donald Trump. Not like him to be so quiet. That's what like that Donald Trump was like. Dear God. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand is the um, telephone number if you want to give us a call. You'd be very welcome to. What I was about to say, what you're doing this weekend? But am I right in thinking it's only Wednesday? <laughs> it's Wednesday. Flipping it! This week's dragging on a bit, isn't it? It's dragging on a bit. Man alive! I am shattered. Um, I'm going to see. I can't go to the school play tomorrow because it's because uh, I do this silly job. But I'm going to see the rehearsal of the school play tomorrow afternoon, which, which will be better. As which you know, I am very. I'll take this call, Sam. I'll take this call. I'm very, very excited about. Hello, line two. You're on the wireless. Hey, UFA, UFA, England, a shit. <laughs> That was actual Donald Trump. In 15 years of doing phone-in radio, that, dear listener, was the funniest call I have ever taken. Well played. Well played, that person. Oh, beautifully. Beautifully done. Oh, man, I love to catch my breath now. Ah, oh, breathe. Ah, oh, breathe. Oh, have you dropped something? 
No, was it you? No, it was not me. I can smell it. I've heard reports. Well, d don't believe what they say on the internet. The internet is full of lies. Good evening, Darren. Darren, it's here. I can't believe you're not supporting the national team. What's wrong with you? Why, why would I support them? You should. Why? Because we're doing well. We're doing really well. Hang on, hang on. So you, hang on. Well, there's, you're an idiot then, because you're saying we should support them because we're doing well. What if we were doing badly? What, you wouldn't support them? That's a no, bit two-faced no, of you. Hang on, hang on. It's not two-faced. They're young lads. They're young lads. So I should be supporting them because they're young lads. What if they were, what about the women's team? Women, if, 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 women can't play football. That's obvious. Thanks very much for your call, Darren. And those are the kind of people that have patriotic pride. Idiots. <laughs> Darren calling from 1982. Absolute there. idiots are the people that, if you've got patriotic pride, you're an idiot. If you want, you've come and have a go if you think you can do better than that. But the answer can't be because you should. 0344 499 1000 is the telephone number if you want to give us a call. <clears throat> right, let's go to Mo. Good evening, Mo. Hey, man, how are you? I'm very, very well. Could you just bear with me one second? Let me hear you say, yeah! Yeah. Let me hear you say, yeah! Yeah. No mo, no 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 mo, no 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 mo, no no. There's no chance. No mo, no 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 mo, no 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 mo, no no. There's no chance. No mo, ain't coming on my show. No 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 mo, ain't coming on my show. You mo, no mo, never gonna come on my show, mo, no mo, ain't coming on my show. <laughs> Let me hear you say yeah! What a nod. When I'm on the stage, I'll ask for more. I'm on the ass, I know the last. I'll work real hard, do you like my cash? Tick, 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 time. When I'm gonna go, you're going for mine. You mo, ain't gonna come on my show, cause you are a big knob head. No, 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 mo. No, 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 mo. No, no, there's no chance of you coming on my show. No, 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 mo. No, 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 mo. No, there ain't no chance of you coming on my show. Coming on my show and you're so rude. You have a go, you ain't got the tooth. I'm gonna kick your ass, dear boy. Get your mom and dad on for joy. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make you look like a blue fool. You gotta be on the floor. Gonna kick your ass, you'll ask for more. No mo, no mo, no mo, no mo. No mo, no 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 mo, no 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 mo, no no. There's no chance of you coming on my show, cause I <laughs> don't know this song very well. The sound from my mouth is a rap you hear. No valley too deep, no mountain no high. Reach the top, gonna touch the sky. They try to diss me, cause I sell out. I make techno when I am proud. Ah. Here we go. Join in with me, mo. Here we go. On the ones and twos, it's Mo from Watford. No Mo, no, no, no Mo, no, no, no Mo. Now it's your turn, Mo, Mo. No, no, no Mo, no. <laughs> no, 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 no Mo, no, 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 no Mo, no Mo. I'm joking, Mo. What have you got for us tonight? 
Yeah, I don't know why. Not a chance, buddy. Let's go to the break. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that song, as you may have got that. <laughs> Talking. I don't this think it summer matters. at Wren Kitchens, you'll get a massive 50% off when you buy five or more units. Well, Ron, it is a game of two halves. <clears throat> Sorry, I mean, that's 50% off all our kitchens. We'd also like to throw in, uh, throw in the fact that we're offering interest free kick. I mean, interest free credit for up to five years. Wren Kitchens summer offers the event of the summer. Yes, get in. <clears throat> Minimum spend applies. We can't say sticks like <laughs> Turbo from Evo Sticks full name on the radio <laughs> were not allowed. <laughs> we can say that sticks like <laughs> Turbo is an amazingly fast setting adhesive. We can say sticks like <laughs> Turbo can be used in all weather conditions. <laughs> we can even say sticks like <laughs> Turbo holds up to 300 <laughs> kilograms in just 15 minutes. I didn't, I didn't know the song. I, I didn't know where the chorus was went. I, I don't know it. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. I appreciate sticks that. Like Turbo we'll play, um, we'll play a McCartney song. We'll song and here at the construction site yeah, cup, the contractor team is down to ten men. But wait, they're bringing on a super subby. A few, in fact. Brickies, sparkies, chippies. What a oh, hat trick! Um... Looks like this contractor and these subcontractors used some great tactics and went to supersubby.com, where contractors find subbies and subbies find contractors by skills, location, and trade. It's free for subbies with a three-month free trial for contractors. So download the free app or visit supersubby.com. Super Subby. The new smart way to find site work or workers. And there's Mike Simmons onto the forecourt, approaches the T-Rock, but picks out the Tiguan. Looking at a seven-seater Tiguan all space now. He spies the Tuareg, promising, but he's leaving it late. A quick exchange with the Volkswagen salesman, and yes, Mike Simmons is the proud owner of a brand new Volkswagen Tuareg. Save £500 on top of of existing offers when you test drive any SUV. Just make sure you get there before the final whistle. Yes, please. July, delivered by 15th August 2018. Except the new Tuareg, which is to be delivered by 31st no, October no, 2018. No, 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 Good evening, I'm Danielle Yawavietska. Police have confirmed two people in Wiltshire... Who no bed! No bed! Exposed no bed! Agent Novichok. Neil Basu, Met Police Assistant Commissioner, has been updating reporters. The Counter-Terrorism Policing Network is now leading the investigation into this incident. This evening, what I've received test results from the court and down that shows that the two people have been exposed to the nerve agent Novichok. The nerve agent is the same one which contaminated Sergei and Yulia Skripal in March, and the rest of the case could be used. It's understood the man arrested on suspicion of the murder of six-year-old Alicia McPhail in the Isle of Bute was under the age of 18. Alicia's body was found in Woodland on Monday morning, just a couple of hours after she'd been reported missing nearby. The Saddleworth Mall fires are being treated as Police say people were seen lighting bonfires shortly before the alarm was raised. Crews have now been battling the blazes for a week and a half. Talk Radio has been told if Esther McVeigh did not come to the Parliament, she The Work and Pension Secretary said she inadvertently misled MPs by telling them the National Audit Office recommended speeding up the rollout of universal credit. Margaret Greenwood, Shadow Secretary of State for Work and Pension, no bed, right? has told us it's hard to believe McVeigh got it so wrong. She's saying that she, she didn't know, presumably, um, so it's incompetence. But, I mean, if she did know what she was doing, then, then she really should resign. I think that's absolutely... Clear. And the International Development Secretary has been applauded in the Commons after becoming the first minister to use sign language in the chamber. Penny Mordaunt signed as well as spoke as she made a statement about a global disability summit taking place in London this month. Your weather, showers gradually fading away this evening, then mostly dry and clear. Tomorrow, dry with sunny spells, but some thundery showers. The Late Night Alternative with Ian Lee on Talk Radio. We have ways of making you talk. And, uh, come on, Paul. Come on, Paul. So Paul McCartney, ladies and Paul McCartney. Yes, sir. Love it. Thank you. 0344 499 1000. The Late Night Alternative. Weeknights from 10 on Talk Radio. Catherine Boyle is here. Hello. My name is Ian Lee. If you want to call up, you'll speak to Sam. He will take your name and number and we'll call you back. If you're looking for the perch, the question, the hook, 
upon which to hang your answer. There ain't one, I'm afraid. It's a free form. It's jazz. It's uh, a talk show, but in jazz format. We sit here and we riff, and sometimes we go off into marvellous psychedelic directions, and sometimes the solos land with a thud on the table, and that's fine. We just brush them to one side. We pick up our instruments, and we start again. You are welcome to join in at any moment, like a, ja- a good jazz band, Catherine and I can ease back ever so slightly when you sense the gap, you pick up the phone and you come and join us, 0344 499 1000, that's what Rachel did, good evening Rachel! Hi yeah. Hello Rachel, what have you got for us uh, this evening, at 6 minutes past 11? I love a bit of jazz! Oh, I love a bit of jazz! <laughs> um, I was voting for some advice, really, okay. um, Oh, there are days where I, I love listening to the show. Yes, and um, there are days where yeah. you feel um, I hate to you the show. sound really um, like punchy and full of life yes. and ready to take anything on. Yes, and there are days where you sound like you're in a much calmer mood, and oh. Oh. and so I've got a situation yes. where um, I had um, a, just over a year ago, I had a full breakdown, Ooh. and I took. Seven, seven, eight months off of work, wow. and um, I went back to work. Um, I've been doing really well at work, but I've got a problem with um, some of the people at work on, like, the management side of things. I think they're a bit freaked out at the fact that I've now disclosed, like, a mental health Uh-oh. issue. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and I, I have thought advice because I'm, I'm definitely being treated differently. And, I, like, I'm I'm on medication, and I'll probably stay on medication for a long time, but yeah. my, my life is really back together, yeah. and, I, and it's in a really positive place. And, and actually, loads of things have changed for the better mm-hmm. because of what yeah. I've been through, and yeah. I've done a lot of learning from it. But what I wanted to kind of uh, sound out from you guys is, uh, yeah, <laughs> is, um, what do you do? What do you do on those days where you just feel like up against the brick wall? And there are some days where I feel all right in myself and I just think, you know, you, you can't change people's perceptions and there's still going to be stereotypes yeah. and stigma and, and things like that. And I'll just show them through the work I'm doing that I can do a perfectly good job. Yeah. And then the next thing mm-hmm. comes up and you still don't get, get given the same opportunities as others. And I know why. I totally know why. Um, but sometimes it really gets you down and there's not very much you can do about it. Well, well hang on. So, so I was going to ask, how are they tr- treating you differently? And I think you just answered that question. They're not giving you the same responsibility that they are giving, yeah. in inverted commas, normal people who haven't had a breakdown. Uh, yeah. Is that exactly right? Exactly that, yeah. And there are some things that I did in my job before I went off, that they haven't given me back. Um, <laughs> so it's a bit naughty, really. And like I said, I have sought advice. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're all the people that are closest to me yeah. are saying, get out of there, because you've well. done so well on a like, recovering and sorting things out. And, you know, literally a year ago, I didn't, <coughs> I didn't want to be here anymore. Yeah. So to, to go from there... To, to where I am now and to be achieving again and to be functioning and to be in a much more positive place is great. And then you've got people who are kind of, you just, it feels like I'm up against them. And my friends and my family are saying, move, find another job. You know, it's going to be detrimental to your mental health and you don't want to take a step backwards. And and there's a part of me, like, um, I was listening to the show and I just thought, he's, one in the, he's in one of those feisty moods. I'm in a feisty mood. Yeah, when I'm in a... Give me their number, Rachel. I'll phone them up and I'll tell them exactly what to... I'm in that kind of mood. Oh, don't. We got in oh, trouble for doing that last I'll night. Pay you to do no, that. No, right. <laughs> Let, let, me, let me ask you some questions, and if they're too personal, tell me to jog on. Are you, yeah. with, even though you seem, you appear to have less responsibility, are you still getting paid the same? Uh, yeah, but part of it is the whole pride no, of okay. what I've worked for. Yeah, of course. What I should be having, yeah. Yeah, of course. I'm, nothing's changed in terms of my no. salary. Okay, well, good. Well, that, on a practical level, that's great that they are, because cause I, I thought you might have been working on a thing where... It was a commission or something, so the less work you did, the less money you got. But that's good. So practically, you're getting the same money. Do you think that your job had uh, played a significant part in in your breakdown? Uh, 
um, yes, yeah, certainly added to to stress and um, misunderstanding. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, before. But yet they still gave you seven or eight months off. That's quite. That's that's quite progressive. Yeah. Do you not think? Do you? Th I, th I think it is that that you were that you had. I think it's great, and I think it's the right thing. But that seems to me to be quite a progressive step for a company to do. Mm. For in terms of mental health. I know, but then they go. They, then they go and 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 like a, a big event. Less than a month after I'm back at work. Yeah. Um, I have to be escorted to the event. <laughs> no! Well, in case you, you go crazy. Well, obviously, yeah, in case I've got a machete with me. Oh, no! Yeah. No! It's Nutty Rachel! Um, I okay. Know. Have you... All right, here we go. <laughs> I don't know the structure it's of it. It's awful, and I can I bet it is. It sometimes, and other days, yeah. oh, it'll I... just make me cry. I hours. get it. I get it totally. And I'm glad that you're laughing about it today, but I get it. I totally get that, you know, it must be humiliating and, and dehumanising yeah. and all of that. I get it, right? I'm not making light of it. I'm just trying to get a bit of the lay of the land. Have you spoken to your boss? Have you said to your boss what you've said to me? Yes. You've said it? You've yes. come out and said, well, you know, I, I want the responsibilities back that I had. Yes. What did he? What did he or she say? Uh, duty of care to me and other members of staff. Oh, what does so the other members like, of staff thing mean then well, in that respect? Obviously, because I'm an ongoing risk. But no, but while I was joking about the knives, they don't, they don't, they don't seriously think that you're capable no, of harming others, no, do they? No, no, no. And I and I've been there for over ten years. And so I've only mean... killed two people so far, so that's that's not bad. <laughs> um, that's what I mean. It's um, yeah. I don't because this is the management. Uh, this is what I'm up against. Yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. Like it's a bit of a wall, and that's why people around me are saying go elsewhere. And part of me is thinking, well, you know, if I follow this through, and there's someone in authority that will actually turn around, like their line managers, or if I can get it heard by the people that I need, you know. Part of me feels like on a mission to say, you know, like in all of the uh, Me Too things and all yeah, of yeah. the abuse cases, there has to be that first person to put their hand up and say this isn't okay. Is there a, 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 hu a an HR department there that you could go and go and make an official complaint to? Oh, I have, yeah. Okay, yeah. can you tell us what 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 the result of that was? <laughs> I'm laughing because it's ridiculous. Yeah, go on. Yes. I know, I loved, I've loved the formal grievance about wow. the way I've been treated okay. since. And, um, and they're, they're just defending it, saying that I'm being treated the same as anyone else when I know, I know mm. I'm not. Because I always, in these situations, I always try and imagine what if the person had, um, cancer, right? What if it was a, if it was exactly. a physical, if it was a physical illness, um, at, w w w and they were being treated in this way, would mm -hmm. that be discrimination? And, yeah, if the person yeah. with cancer was able to do the job and was willing to do the job and, you know, was um, in remission from cancer, mm -hmm. then, yeah, that's that's that sounds like um, discrimination. Just quick, when you... Uh, Catherine, come in in a second, sorry, because I know you want to. I'm just trying to get the picture. When you spoke to HR and you spoke to your bosses, did they say, look, Rachel, we're doing this for six months just to keep an eye on you, and if at the end of that six months you're okay, we'll go back to normal? No. Right. No, they th no. Oh, no, that's that's out of order then. Catherine, you want to say no? No, I'm, I was going to ask about the HR situation, and I was going to say, oh, we... have you got anything in writing from them saying, stay, state in their case? Because yes. I think, well, good, yeah. that, that's going to be useful. I... Keep everything and make sure they don't know. No whispered conversations in corridors, no little words. Yeah, it's all got to be done properly, isn't it? Because I've had a similar thing, not because of mental health, but because of, you know, my children, for example, and people, you know, as soon as you come back to work having had children, they assume things about you. And I've had to say, and I put it in writing, don't assume I can't do stuff. Don't leave me out of opportunities because you assume it'll be difficult. Put it to me yeah. and I'll see what I can do. You know, I've got a good support yeah. system. Like you, you, you're managing your condition at the moment. And yeah. you will tell them if it's becoming too much. You know, if you've got that agreement between Absolutely. you, then it's got nothing to do with them. They shouldn't be deciding what you are and aren't capable of. That's down to you. Yeah, and um, I, and obviously had to do the whole, you know, being signed on, back on to work with the GP and occupational health and and all that. And, and there's no question with that. But um, that what I had when I returned to work, it's funny you should make the analogy with the cancer mm. thing, 
because um, uh, my line manager actually said, um, it's like when so if someone were to have an epileptic fit, um, they might not realise during that fit that they hurt someone right. with their actions, well. but when they return to work, they might want to apologise for hurting that person because they had an epileptic fit. Did you... Serious. I'm trying to work out what their angle is, because it, it, it comes from an angle of ignorance, I think. Are, are they in any way saying that when you had your breakdown, mm. that you caused some damage at work to people, mm. either physically or emotionally? Did you, you know, did, yeah. did, 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 did you cause trouble at, at work, in, in trouble in italics? With, yeah, with one colleague, yeah. Okay. And uh, is the, how is the situation with that colleague now? So we've not spoke at all. Okay. You all right? Yeah, yeah. I, it's just, um... Can I, am I allowed to ask what happened? Uh, um... Again, you don't have to tell me anything you don't want to tell me. Of course not. No, it's, um, like, there's a funny crossover because we were actually friends before we were colleagues. Yeah. And, um, and I had... I had my breakdown whilst at work yeah. and oh, uh, come like nine o'clock in the evening, I mean, like the doctor was called and my husband was called and come nine, ten o'clock in the evening, this colleague who I work with um, hadn't even like checked in to see how you were and things like that. And that really bothered me and I was really angry at that time. Right. And, um, and so I sent a message saying, Oh, now you show your true colours, you know, um, okay. you're selfish, and with me out the picture, you know, you'll be able to... Okay. Like, so, 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 so... So, it was, the, the, wasn't a very nice text message. Right, so, so, um, so you, you were at your lowest ebb emotionally, and you, you, you were having a breakdown, and, and someone you consider to be a friend, as well as a colleague, didn't give you the support that you felt that you would have I'm liked sure from them. There, yeah, right? me, and yeah. so you sent them, when you were ill, I'm guessing, you sent them a really nasty F you kind of text. Yeah. Okay. And, um, hmm. And why haven't you spoken since? Um, it's just a bit awkward. It's a bit awkward. <laughs> I bet it is awkward. Of course it is. I bet it is. <laughs> um, do you, going back to the epileptic analogy, which is slightly ham-fisted, but do you think that, that when they were talking to you about that, that it was your friend uh, that yeah, they were referring yeah, to? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I think because that, that person has covered all my work while I've been off, yeah. they, you know, they look like golden balls and I'm just a pain in the bum. Yeah. And so it's quite easy for them yeah. to blame, um, like, my mental health on the situation, but... Yeah. The thing is, I've had the time out, I've done what I've needed to do, um, I've had the help that I've needed, and I know that I'm good at my job, um, I'm, I'm back and I'm doing that. Do you work um, in this, yeah. is it, are you in, uh, how, how, physically how close are you to this person in the office? Uh, no, no, we no, it's completely different department, okay. so, okay. no, I've not... You, it's, just, it's just the reason I phoned is no, because, on. like, some, some, mm. I don't know, like, obviously your challenges have been documented, you've talked about them a lot, and, and yet there are some days when yeah. you're quite open about how you're feeling, and then you're still able yeah. to come with great energy and pull yourself out of it, and... Well, and, but that uh, sounds like you're talking about two different things. It. That sounds like you're talking, that, that to, me, to me feels like two different things. But the, one of me doing shows with energy when I'm feeling down, well, you know, sometimes I don't, and I can phone in sick from time to time. But for me, the, the, um, I mean, how difficult would it, all right, okay, um, um, okay, all right, let's just do this. If, if I were your friend that had received that um, message, I'd be pissed off, right, because, and I'm not saying this to shame you in any way. I'm just saying how I feel. And I don't, I don't know the whole picture. But I'd be pissed off because I may have my own reasons 
you know, maybe I saw my mum have a breakdown when I was a kid and so stuff like that freaks me out, man, and I can't have anything to do with it. Or maybe my kids were sick that night. Or maybe I'd just been for a cancer... T- I was going for a cancer test the next... Or, mm. or maybe, the, you know, just there was something in my life that meant that for whatever reason I couldn't step up and be a friend in in, in the way that was would, we would normally expect, okay? And so mm. then to get... um. A message like that would, would 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 really upset me and would really grate me, and um, I would find that tough to deal with. And I was just wondering how, if it were at all possible for you to get in touch with that person and say, "Look, can we go for a coffee and and talk about this?" It, I don't know how possible that would be, and it would be a really awkward coffee, and it would end one of three ways. I imagine it would either end with. Um, your friend getting up and telling you to f off. I never want to talk to you again. You nut, you nutty old cow, and storming out. That's one way. <laughs> it could end um, really awkwardly with kind of nothing being resolved, and you kind of you you sort of maybe shake hands and that's it. Or the third way, and and it's possibly the most likely way, is that it ends with you both in tears. <laughs> uh, you know, saying sorry for what you did, and th- them saying sorry for what they didn't do, and and that's what. But and 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 starting again. Do you do you see what I mean? Oh yeah, I mean that that would be great. But that's the point you've got to take that you get one of those three options, and two of those options aren't great. <laughs> But at least it means you don't have to avoid each other. Uh, 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 and it, yeah, and it means it's out. It's out there. Choose discomfort over resentment is my kind of mantra. It, is, do you think that could be possible, Rachel? I, I think it's worth giving a go. It's been a long time, but um, yeah. like I said, we were friends before we started working together. And I think, it, like in hindsight, probably my expectations of of that friend from that time were too high um and um but then at the same time they were fully aware of what what i was going yeah. through and the well, struggles before yeah yeah I, I don't know if people I, i've often thought that people are fully aware of situations that i've been going through and then when i've told them they've gone oh man i didn't have a clue i didn't have a clue what was going on you know quite often this is part of the reason I'm getting divorced is because, you know, quite often with my wife, I would think she knows what's going on in my head. But actually, unless I sit down and say this, this, this and this, she doesn't have a clue. And that's quite common in human relationships. Can I also say as someone who's, you know, a supportive friend or try, I've tried my best. Sometimes, you know, you, you tell each other you, tr- you trouble so much and she, he or she may have, I don't know what the situation is. I'm just guessing. But you seem to handle it. Right, so it seems like the end of the world, then you seem to handle it. So they don't know whether to wade in, whether to sit back and let it pass like it has before. You know, sometimes it can be difficult because they don't want to be your mum. They don't want to suffocate you or it, sometimes it can be very, very worried. Sometimes I get very, very worried. But at the same time, I, I'm not anyone's keeper. Do you know what I mean? And also, some people are scared of, in the way that people are still a little bit, but not so much, but used to be in the 70s and the 80s, scared of cancer. People didn't say cancer, they'd say the can, the C word. People used to be scared of cancer, and they are a little bit. Um, people are scared of, of mental health and of breakdowns and of, you know, breakdown. God, they had a know, breakdown. and just experiencing that yeah. for the first time ever, like, uh, I, I feel like a bit of a hypocrite because I've never been touched in, in my little bubble of life with, um, sort of mental health issues from anybody close to me either. Yeah. So I didn't know about, um, sy- symptoms and medication and, and therapies and stuff until I've been through it myself. So I think it's very hard to understand um, a lot of the symptoms mm, of and, and things unless you've been through it. Um, but I had sat down with this person and I had told them okay. exactly what I was feeling and that I didn't understand it. Uh, like in the months leading up to actually, you know, my brain and my body giving up. Mm. Do you miss her? Do you miss them? I don't know. Do you miss them as a friend? Um, n- no, not after this. No. Okay. Okay. Well, in that case, maybe meeting up with them isn't the right thing to do. I, I suggest it would clear, keep your side of the street clean. Um, I suggest it might be what your boss is referring to. Um, mm. But in answer to your original question, I mean, how easy would it be for you to get a job somewhere else? Um, 
um, I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's hard. I don't think that would be the well, problem. Then, then go and look for another, that. look, look, look for another, because I, 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 I would, ha I hate being the one that gets up first. And, and pay, I don't want to pay the way. I don't want to clear the path for others behind me. I want to follow the path, the well-worn path that people have trod before. So there's all, you know, this <laughs> hashtag me too stuff. I couldn't do it. I yeah. know, but there's a really strong intrinsic part of me that really wants to let them know that they can't behave in that way. Like literally, yeah. um, having to escort me to an event and, um, <laughs> and then like not giving me some of my responsibility back mm. because I'll be, um, I'll be lone working and like, pfft, well, here's, declared fit to return well, here's to the work. thing, right? Here's the thing. You, 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 you're a good, you're a good human being, right? Above everything else, you are a good human being. The fact that you are asking these questions tells me you are a good person. Okay. So, so keep that in mind. Um, it can never hurt to look for a new job, you know, well, if you keep your eyes out for a new job, um, or you stay and you fight the fight and you, you, you show them that you're, you're fit and you're well and they're discriminating against you. In that case, I do suggest that making amends with your former friend goes a long way to showing that you are not nuts, that you are, you're well, that you are mature that you are responsible and able to clear up any mess, whether that mess is yours or not, and maybe it's partly yours at least, that you can clear up any mess, that you are a reliable colleague, that you can see that, that maybe you have, have spoken inappropriately to people in the past, and you can sort that out. Now, whether that clears the problem with your boss or not, I don't know, but I suspect that that would, would, would help that situation. Yeah, I think it would take a lot of the wind out of those sails, because they can't say that you're being unreasonable. And then you can go and kick a fuss up if they're still being dicks about responsibility. Also, if you do get a new job, then wonderful opportunity to tell them exactly why you'll be leaving, and don't oh, be polite about yeah, it. Yeah, go and do a, do a, a, a whittle on the boss's desk. <laughs> or dump, do a dump in his drawer! Gosh. Rachel, would you would you keep in? Uh, honestly, I really appreciate your honesty. I don't know if anything we've said has been any use, but would you give us a call again and let us know how things are going? Oh, I'd love to. All right, nice yeah, one. I wish you the best you. of luck. You're a good person. Thanks so much for your time and, and advice. I appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you, Rachel. Take care. Ta-ta. Oh, most of all, you've just got to be kind to yourself. In it though. In it. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. Alan, stay there. Come to you after this. Talk radio. Talk and entertainment yeah. across the nation. Talk radio. Give it some lift. Brighten up your mornings and take a brilliant break with Mike Graham on Talk Radio with the Sun Holiday Shop. Great value breaks all year round. Listen to Talk Radio every weekday morning from ten for three hours packed full of fun. Fabulous features, great value guests, and quick fire calls on all of the day's top talking points. Don't miss Mike Graham every weekday morning from 10 on Talk Radio with the Sun Holiday Shop. Great value breaks all year round. Go to the sun.co.uk slash holiday shop. Listen. Do you hear that? That's the sound of nothing. Sounds nice, doesn't it? At Ford, we like the sweet sound of nothing, too. That's why we offer 0% APR representative on Ford options across our car range, including the all-new Fiesta Active Crossover. Visit your nearest participating Ford dealer today. Ford. Together, we go further. Retail only vehicles to be contracted by 30th of September 2018 no, 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 no. and registered by 31st of December 2018. Subject to status, guarantees may be required. Free post Ford credit. Exclusions apply. Contact your Ford dealer for more information. Is now your kid's sleep time? Maybe it's your take-out the recycling time. Or, if you're enjoying some new time, it could be the perfect time to renew your tax credits. Your world isn't 9 to 5, so neither's ours. That's why you can renew your tax credits online, day or night. Do it now. Visit gov.uk slash manage tax credits now. We're ready when you are. Sharing selfies from the barbecue, over posting wedding oh, pics, nice. streaming the game under your desk. It's a busy July. That's why at Tesco Mobile we're offering you a massive 20 gig well, sim only deal really for just £18 a month. <laughs> that's your summer yeah, that's shared, nice. streamed and sorted. For great deals like this, go online or in store. Tesco Mobile. 
Every little helps. 12-month contract required. Fair use policy applies. D's and C's at TescoMobile.com. At Green Flag, we think the AA are great. They've won bucketfuls of awards. They'll give you unlimited call-outs when you get in a pickle. Mmm, pickle. And they cover 100% of the UK. Very good indeed. So why do we think that is so great? Because Green Flag do all of this too. And we'll have you AA renewal quote. Green flag. Common sense to the rescue. There may be a charge for call with the same problem. Savings based on our closest equivalent UK vehicle cover for vehicles 10 years and under. T's and C's apply. Closing time conversation for tax inspectors, taxi drivers and taxidermists. Great big talk for the wee small hours. You've been trolling me big time, mate. The Late Night Alternative with Ian Lee on Talk Radio. Don't forget, dear listener, you can come and see us in Manchester on July the 28th. I don't know. These the, the tickets are sluggish. Let's be honest. Tickets for Manchester and Scotland are sluggish. And I'm thinking maybe that we do knock it on the head for a bit, that this is the end of us going out and doing shows for a bit. So we get lots of lovely people saying, hey, well, why don't you come to, um, uh, to, to various places? I and mean, lots of people saying, why don't you come to Scotland? OK, well, we've done, we booked two shows in Scotland and, and we, we, we ain't sold no tickets. We sold 30 tickets for each show. In uh, Edinburgh, the 1st of September, and Glasgow, the 2nd of September. Both venues hold about 200 people. We've sold 30 tickets. Another thing is that whenever we say we're going, for example, um, when we're coming to Manchester, we'll get a load of um, tweets immediately after saying, why don't you come to Liverpool? Why don't you come to Leeds? It's near enough. Um, We can't afford to do everywhere. We can't. So I'm kind of thinking... That we'll do. The, the full list of shows are up on um, ianlee.com slash events. Uh, and listen, I know money's tight. I'm not. It's not. I'm not having to go at you. I know money's tight, and the last thing you want to spend is twelve quid seeing these idiots dicking about on stage with no no script or anything. So I get it. It's, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing. Um, it was the old man. Spend love. I'm not doing a spend love. Why were we offered him as a guest? I don't the other know. Week? I think it's someone who doesn't listen. Wow. I'm not doing a spend love. Uh, I'm just saying. That, you know, because it costs us money. If we sell out this 65 seater venue in Manchester, after petrol and hotel, we get about 50 quid each, right? That's if we sell out and we've got 18 tickets left. So we're gonna lo- we'll lose money and that will we'll break even, which is fine. But I, you know, and I like Manchester. I'm looking forward to coming up there. We're gonna hopefully do the show from a listener's house. We need to sort that out. But that's um, just why we don't go everywhere. But that, but that's it. And so I think once we've done these and Edinburgh and there's Brighton, which will hopefully will sell out because that's sold out before, um, and Bath, um, maybe we can leave it for a little while and we have a rethink. If you want tickets for Manchester, it's on July the 28th, ticketsource.co.uk slash Ian dash Lee, I-A-I-N dash L-W, ticketsource.co.uk slash Ian dash Lee. Uh, and tickets and all the dates and everything are on um, ianlee.com slash events. Let's go to Alan. Good evening, Alan. Hello. Hello, Alan. What have you got for us? Well, firstly, I'd like to say, when are you coming to Belfast? We've been to Belfast! When? Exactly! <laughs> when, when were we in Belfast? November, wasn't it? We've been, We've to, been Belfast. to Belfast! I took my girlfriend to see Richard Herring. Well, you should have took her to see us. We were there. I didn't know you were there. Where were we in Black Box? The, the Black Box, wasn't yeah. it? In Belfast. So, uh, well, we went to Mandela Hall. Well, That's you, why you didn't see us. We weren't there, you muppet. Oh, was Richard Herring. Yeah, you're an idiot. We were in the black box and we and we sang songs and everything. It was Actually, a great that was quite night. A big one, wasn't it? It was a big one. We would have been there if we had a known we, you were there. We, we would have been there. Well, we mentioned it on the show a lot. Well, and I've listened to your show a lot, and I've never heard you mention Belfast once. You we mentioned it. it. Well, go and download in Glasgow. You oh. never mentioned Belfast once. I'm going to punch you in the nose in a minute. Do you listen? <laughs> do you listen to our other show that we do? What other show? There we go. There we you go. The other show? Yeah, we do a podcast. Have you heard that? No, I just listened to that show. Okay. We do a podcast called The Rabbit Hole. If you go, go and go and find it and go back a few episodes, you'll hear some shows we recorded well, in Belfast. You've already been. Well, 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 you can soak up the atmosphere. Have a few more <laughs> drinks and pretend you're there. Well, <laughs> you missed us, man. We were talking about coming back, but I, I don't know. It just, it, it's just, mo- it's money in it, and money's tight for everyone. So, well, um, you know, like putting ourselves on the line. I'm, I'm only a poor postman. Oh, I'm so, oh, well, then you're loaded then, because you just open everyone's birthday cards and get their <laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the first thing I phoned about was kudos to your last caller, Rachel, wasn't it? Yes. 
Yes, because I've suffered a bit of mental health myself. Oh, I thought you were going to say you were her boss and she was fired. (laughs) 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 Oh, God. You're the funniest man I've ever spoken to. I am. I am. And I'm guessing you didn't get to speak to Richard Herring that night, otherwise. (laughs) (laughs) I've never never spoke to him afterwards. I compared the size of her hands, because I have small hands, too. Oh. So, so, so what's going on for you, then, uh, Alan? Well, you were talking earlier about not supporting England. And obviously you can tell I'm from Northern Ireland. Yeah, because you've mentioned it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but me and my girlfriend, the other, or, well, last night, was it? We're both supporting England. Right. But so why? We're not from England. Why can you not support your, your home But well, why should I? Why, why not support... I don't say you should. I, I'm just asking but why you know, I might as well support... Croatia, or Sweden, or, 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 mm. or Brazil, I might as well support them, I've got, well, I mean, why should I support England? I don't get it. I don't get national where pride. From? Where are you from? Um, I'm from the planet Earth. <laughs> you just support anyone that's... Well, no, first of all, I don't like football, I think it's a tedious sport, but I don't get supporting someone just because they can't, they come from the same bit of rock as you. <laughs> It's, it's fluke. It's pure luck that we are, we are British and you're British, sunshine. You're British. So, you know, it's pure luck that we're British and that I'm born in England. So, so what? Pure luck where you're born, yes. I totally get that. Yeah. But it's, it's good to, to back someone and have a bit of it. Why? And a big event that's going on. Why? Why? No, tell me why it's good to back someone in a big event. Because, because well, for a start, you can put a bet on. Oh, for God's <laughs> sakes, man. <laughs> uh, this is, this is, now we're getting to the, the nub of this. You're just a gambling addict. <laughs> aren't you, well, huh? Probably, yes. Well, well. And, and my girlfriend, Julianne, she's, she's a bigger gambling addict than I am. Yeah, well, she sounds like a great woman. What did you say her name was? Jolly Ann? Jolly Ann. Jolly Ann? Jolly Ann, yeah. Jolly Ann? Jolly Ann. Jolly, Jolly Ann? No, Julie. Oh, Julie Ann. Yes. I prefer Jolianne. <laughs> Jolianne. That's a form, that's a bleach, isn't it? Yeah, Jolianne, I like that. <laughs> she sounds like a nice lady. Oh, it's just lovely, it's just beautiful. Well, oh, so you, she's just beautiful, not not intelligent, funny, well read. Well, no, not really. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, the old romance is coming out. Tell me this, Miss, now. I texted her and told her I was going to be speaking to you. Mm. Well, then you're dead meat, mate. <laughs> oh, no, no. She gets me. Don't. Hey, I tell you what, instead of us coming to B- Belfast, why don't you come to Manchester? OK, then. When are you going to Manchester? We... On July the 28th. <laughs> no, that's too... I, I can't get that off. I told you I'm a postman. It's hard to get time off. Just you're... put yourself in a box and get yourself sent. <laughs> That's what you got to do. You get a discount, surely. <laughs> if only. If, if only. the boss would give me time off. If I've only. ever any had with summer leave, my summer leave was the start of May. Well, you're an idiot. You're a sucker. You've, <laughs> you've totally spunked up your summer holiday. You should have kept that for a while. <laughs> kept your powder dry. That's just the life of the postman. You, you, you got three months in May. Or three months. What? <laughs> you get three weeks in May, or you get three weeks in July. And that's it. You have to take the three weeks together? Yeah, well, that's uh, all I have left. He says to right, me, so it's your, t- it's your turn to save for your leave. I says, what's left? He says... Right, so the- here's the thing. So how much annual leave do you get in total? Six weeks. Right, it's right. So shut up, man. <laughs> You've just painted a picture that all, all we get is three months, three weeks off a year, and it's either, it's either May or July. It's not. You get six weeks, <laughs> and you just booked the rest of your time off too late. You left it too late, so it had all gone! No, but some of it's in winter. Thanks for calling, Alan. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye. I mean, the what cheek. unbelievable! The cheek of the man, blaming us for his poor planet. All you get is three weeks off in either May or July. Oh, apart from the other three weeks making six weeks, and you get it, get it off any time you wanted if you booked it early enough, you absolute pudding. Oh, three, four, 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 nine, nine, one thousand, talk radio. Across the UK. Dear God. Live and on DAB. A new kind of talk radio. We'll get you talking. When Dave met Steve, sparks flew. 
When Barry met Gary, the foundations were laid. When Fred met Alex, they knew it would work. And they all met thanks to Supersubby.com. For subcontractors looking for contractors and contractors looking for subbies, Supersubby finds the perfect match by skills, location and trade. It's free for subbies with a three-month free trial for contractors. So download the app from the App Store and Google Play or visit Supersubby.com. Supersubby, the new, smarter way to find site work or workers. It doesn't matter how our customers feed back to us, but it matters that we listen. Which is why we've added the new Ford Transit Courier to the Transit Range. It's still as hard-working, versatile and reliable as the rest of the Transit Range, but is now available with a new optional 6-inch colour touchscreen, voice control, <laughs> DAB and sat-nav. So whether you're delivering sourdough to Swindon, T-shirts to Tooting or doing plumbing in Perth, the Transit Courier can carry your business further. When business demands, we deliver at ford.co.uk. Ford. Together, we go further. A tough and overgrown lawn never gets in the way of the McCulloch man when there's a match on. Like a powerful striker with his McCulloch lawnmower. He has the power to get the job done, cutting the lawn down to size well before the pre-match build-up, leaving it looking good enough to host the cup final. Get your McCulloch lawnmower and other garden power tools at good DIY stores nationwide or at McCulloch.com. McCulloch, the power to get the job done. You know your funk. From your punk. From your Gregorian monk. But do you know your pension options? PensionWise is a service set up by the government to provide free impartial guidance about your pension pot. If you're over 50, call 0800 144 8944 to book your free telephone or face-to-face -face appointment. PensionWise, get to know your options. Afternoons with Jamie East on Talk Radio. Embark on an afternoon odyssey into a virtual adult playground. Broadcast at the intersection of the near future and the reimagined past. Eastworld with Jamie East. Tomorrow afternoon from one on Talk Radio. A world of adventure. Mad props to the West Wittering Posse. A world of fantasy. Is there anybody out there? Is there anything out there? A world of age-inappropriate footwear. How much flack have I had this week in the clothes I wear? Eastworld with Jamie East. Tomorrow afternoon from one on Talk Radio. I'm going to turn up in a nappy next week. <laughs> Listen, without consequence. Whispering lunar incantations for cross parents. Um, cross dressers. And did you know this about me? And cross rail workers. Steel and polycarbonate. The late night alternative with Ian Lee. I've got, I've got a very poor internet connection. On Talk Radio. I'm going through a McCartney phase and I'm fascinated by him when he got arrested in Japan with a load of grass, load of grass. And he spent nine days in jail and uh, he spent the first night, he didn't have a bed, they had a mat, and he spent the first night sat bolt right up against the, the, the wall of the cell because he was scared he was going to get raped. It's a true, true story. And, um, he would respond to the, the, all the other prisoners knew he was there and they would shout out, yesterday, yesterday. And so he'd sing yesterday for them. And then a bit later on, he got, the, would get let out into the yard to smoke fags and he would play a game with them called who can touch the wall the highest, which apparently the Beatles used to play in Germany when they were bored. And you stand against the wall and you jump up and you see who can touch the wall the highest. And I find this whole period of Paul McCartney fascinating right absolutely fascinating so I've, I'm, I've got an idea for something in my head so during the break I just typed in Paul McCartney Japan drugs right I'm gonna show you that look at that picture that came up it's Paul and Linda doing the eyes it's Paul and Linda doing the eyes but I find that whole pe that, that whole two weeks just incredible you know the, every, the whole band were warned it's still with wings and the whole band were warned it's Japan right they are really strict about drugs you have to clear out your suitcases you've got to clean underneath your fingernails check your everything you've you've got to be so clean because they will check everything and everyone came through and no one got checked apart from paul and linda no one got checked apart from paul and linda and, the bloke, and paul describes it brilliantly he said uh, you know the guard opened the opened my bag lifted up a pair of shoes 
and pulled out a massive bag of weed and he looked more embarrassed than I did. And um, nine days in prison. And then there was like a big diplomatic for he, he could have got seven years. Could have got seven years. And um, he, he kind of got sent home and was banned from Japan for 1980. It's about 18, 20 years, I think, he got banned from it. Incredible, incredible, incredible time. Anyway, 0344 499 1000. Good evening, David. Hello. Um, after my last night's conversation, I'm probably in trouble with the McCartney um, things. Um, the McCartney but things. also, I knew his drummer, who I won't name, uh, who was... The Ringo Starr! No, 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 not the Beatles. When Joe, he in trouble. Joe English. Really? Was that his name? I don't remember. Oh, hang on, hang on a minute. I'm guess, hang on a minute. I'm guessing his... No, Wings we're talking. We're talking when, yeah. he, when he got into trouble. He's had five drummers in Wings. No, the original one. First one. De well, hang on, but the original drummer wasn't there when he got arrested for pot. Oh, really? Oh, well, that exonerates da me. Danny Sywell. No, I don't think that was it. I, I, I'm, I, you know, <laughs> it's know. so long ago. Do you know who? Or, so you know. don't. You do, so you. So you're phoning in to say you don't know the drummer from Wings. Hey, me neither. Me no, neither. I did. I did. I was okay. a kid. Okay. I was young. I was young. We were all doing young. it then. We were all doing it then. Anyway, David, what no, do you have for us this um, evening? Um, well, the, 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 that was the bad news oh. that, that I might be in trouble. The good news is yeah. uh, we I'm a Windrush it. child and I've just been given a British passport today. Um, are you really? Yeah. And have you really? Yes, honestly. And how does that, um, gosh, that's a surprising bit of news. How does that make you feel as a person? Um, after a decade of trying to get a British passport, yeah. uh, because of the Windrush thing, I am over the moon. So, hang on, you came over as part as of... As a child. As a child. How old were you, man? Uh, four years, uh, five years old in 1965. Wow. And do you remember coming over? Yes, I do. I remember the boat trip. Can I pick your brains a bit? Because I've not spoken to anyone who, who actually came over. I've heard... I've, what was, what, what was it like the day before you left? How was it sold um, to you? Well, well, to be honest, uh, I, I'm saying I'm Windrush, but but I came from Australia, but I still count as a Commonwealth. Well, okay, yeah, it's the same thing. Okay, but how? So, but so, what was what was the selling point then? How, how, why? How was it sold to you? What were you expecting when you came over? What, land of milk and honey. Well, absolutely, because my parents were invited over here, yeah. and we got on a boat called the SS Orchides, and we went to Hong Kong, Singapore, Cairo, and I remember every day, everybody saying, or me saying, oh, am I in England? They said, no, you're no, not there no. yet. And it was six weeks. Flipping and remember, this man. was summer in the Southern Hemisphere. Eesh. So when we arrived here in 1965 in November, it was very grey and very wet. Yes. And I remember looking over the uh, gunnels of the boat and saying, is this is where we're going to live? And that must have went, been a huge disappointment to you. It was, and still is. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, so, so, so why ten years ago then did you, so you've not had a British passport, though, you had an Australian passport? I, 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 well, you I, just didn't have a passport? No, 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 I've still got an Australian one, but right. I've never had the right paperwork, and actually I want to thank the government for destroying all these paper oh. bits and pieces, oh. because I've been giving it all handed on a plate for free. Are you, uh, well, how do we know you're not a sleeper cell from the Australian Liberation Army? Allah. Well, no, I'm not. Oh, you would say that, though, wouldn't you? You flaming galah. Um, no. oh, that's exciting, man. Oh, so, so, after ten years of trying, how, how long have you been actively trying this time, then? Uh, since the 17th of May, since I got in touch with my MP and oh. she saw the good hit. Oh, hey, well that's, that's brilliant. Well, congratulations. So, with all that's happened and people getting cross about it and, and, you know, great swathes of the British public saying it was this absolute scandal, they've bent over backwards and there's been something of an amnesty for you lot then? Uh, beyond an amnesty and also... They reckon they're going to give me some money. Oh! The inconvenience. First of all, I'd like to apologise for the casual racism of my producer, Catherine, calling you that lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, oh, you might be, you might be quids in. This is great news. It's the least we can do. We should let you go and stay in Buckingham Palace for a month. 
Well, I jokingly said today, uh, when I got the bits and pieces and paperwork and blah, 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 I said, I'd really like Liz to, to hand me the yeah. passport. She should do, on bended knee. Well, yeah, but, but it, you know, it probably wasn't her fault. Well, no, but, um, oh man, what a world we live in. Well, uh, congratulations, I'm very pleased for you, David. You where are you going to go first? Where Where are you going to go? Which Which country are you going to go to first with your new British passport? Be a Brit abroad. Uh, I'm going to go everywhere. Wowzers! And I am going to spend areas. my compensation money abroad. Doing... Abroad. Spend it abroad. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to do a world tour. Nice for you. Uh, nice one, David. That's brilliant news, man. Thanks for sharing that with us. Pleasure. Cheers, my dear. Tata. That's good, isn't it? Hello, Martin. Hello. Hello. Oh, Martin, oh, sweetheart. sweetheart. How are you doing, sweetheart? Hello, darling. How are you? How are you doing? I'm not too bad. Thanks. Me, uh, me breakdowns coming round. I'm getting a bit happy now, you know. Oh, I did... had a nervous breakdowns, but I'm getting got... a little bit happy. Look, I phoned you tonight talking about consciousness. You ph phoned us from the shower. It sounds like. Are you naked? No, I'm drunk, lad. Hey, that'll sort out your breakdown. Yeah, I'm drunk. Now, about consciousness. Yes, right? sir. You know. Um, I believe that we all have a soul, but the soul is, if, imagine your right sight, when you look at something, Yes. your heart pulses, and as it pulses, it, it pulses consciousness, takes it into your eyesight and onto a hard drive of understanding. Okay. Now, the thing is, though, darling, because when you blink, when you close your eyes, you see a red dot because of your blood. If you put a torch to your eyes, you see a red through your, through the, through the eyelash, through your eyelashes. Yes, eyelids. yes. And as you see red, imagine processing a film. You've got to put it in a red, in a room with red light. So the blood in your eyes, eyelashes becomes the processing factor of red to process what you see them download it out to consciousness. Do you follow me? Yes, master. Now, sweetheart, right, is the lady there with you? Because I'd like to ask her. The um, lady is present. Okay, what's your name, sweetheart? My name's Catherine. Catherine, darling. Are you married? Yes. Tell me, do you dance for your husband when you want a dress? If you want something that you want, do you dance for your husband to um to get him to get what you want? No, I tend to just get him round? I just tend to mither him till he relents. <laughs> That's nice, because I've never had a partner, but I'd like a partner who would um who would be able to bend me around the finger, because <laughs> I wouldn't like to be um. I wouldn't like to be a husband who would deny a partner, but I wouldn't want to spoil her, so... No, you're right. And what what do you think a woman wants in a husband, sweetheart? Well, I think you're right. We don't want a pushover. We want a little bit of a challenge, but mostly we just want a best mate, don't we? Yeah, friends are important, you know. Because a lot of these youngins, they get, they get a partner and they live in a flat, they get married, well, they, they, live, they live in a flat, they give up the flat to go live with a partner and then they have arguments and they have to go back to the flat again, well, to another premises, whereas if you keep your flat, then you won't um, have to um, have somewhere to live after you split, do you follow yeah, me? I know. Because a lot of these youngsters, they don't know what they want really, do they? No. Um, do, do any of us, I'm 40, I still don't know what I want. You're 40, I'm 50, and, um, you know, as I say, I'm drunk, but the thing is with that, I, I'd rather wait because, um, you know, there's, um, life is, life, life is, um, you know, you see, it's a bit, it's a bit hard, and, um, and I think a lot of these, call me brother, he gets a girlfriend, and they're acting like rabbits, and then they end up splitting up, I mean, what's that all about? Well, at least having fun before they split up. Yeah, well, you can't call it fun, can you? When you got to build a house, you build your flat up again. We have you really? Like, oh. Or can you call it fun? What <laughs> it? What is fun? To live, to live with, to lose a love, to to have a relationship, and then having to split up. Or do you think it's better to go single and try to get the best partner that you could possibly get? It's or better. It's, rather... it's better to have loved and lost than to spend your life just knocking one out. Oh dear. What is yeah, that's exactly what they say. You see, the thing is, I'm scared of, um, I'm scared of having a, uh, I'm scared of having a broken heart, you see. 
Go on and experience the joy of holding hands and falling in love. Don't worry about the broken heart. That 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 is almost inevitable. Mm. That will come. The only way that won't come is if you die first. But if they die first or you split up, you'll have a broken heart. It's inevitable. Go and experience the joys. Yeah, but James Will has just lost his wife, haven't he, sweetheart? Yeah, but, but, but they had an amazing, amazing, amazing life together, which I'm sure, I don't often speak for people, but I'm sure he wouldn't change for the world. Ah, oh, yeah, but is it worth it? Yes. Totally. It it? Yes. yes! Do you think it's better to have... You see, um, you know, Ian, right, I'd like to say to you, we've, you asked once James Will, you said to him once... Do you still masturbate? And Jim says he doesn't do it no more. Did I, did know, I ask him that? Abstaining, abstaining from that helps your mental illness. It helps your mental, no. your mental outlook on life. But it's bad know? for your prostate if you don't masturbate. And that's true. You need it to clear out the helps. tubes. What did you say? It helps it. It's good for your prostate to clear out your tubes by uh, via onanism. Masturbation. Uh, but, but, um, but, Sweetheart, you see, the thing is, if you're masturbating, then the electricity... I'm not now, in case you're wondering, I'm not now. I know, but if you do it right, the, the, the electricity flow into your prostate will cook it. No, I don't think... I don't think your prostate gets I'll, cooked via masturbation. I don't think so. Mind you, I don't have a medical degree anymore. Yeah, but it's bound... You know, mind, if you imagine your brain, right, getting um, a shock of electricity, yes. it's going gonna, it's gonna to end up frying it, so it's not good... Your prostate, isn't, your prostate isn't in your brain. I know, but it's the same principle. If you get an electric shock, right, in your brain, then it's going to end up frying it. And if you're mm. masturbating, that electricity is going to end up cooking your prostate, isn't it? Imagine if you died because mm. of your cooked prostate mm. while you were masturbating, and that's how the medical team or your mum found yeah. you. Yes, but in, internally, it can't be good for your prostate if you've got electricity flows flowing into it. Is there not a way? But that's where your prostate's for, Martin, sweetheart. Yes, but not every every night or every week. Ah, uh, wow. that's where I'm going wrong. I haven't done it for 15 years. Wow, that's a, that's a big... That can't be good for you. Your tubes are completely backed up with n- that's naughty that's juice. What? Yeah, but that's what wet dreams are for, because I keep having wet dreams every day. Oh, okay. And on, on that bombshell, we say thanks very much for calling, Martin. Wowzers. I mean... Oh... That's our job. I've been out of the way for 15 years. Fucking hell. I don't know what's happened to you lately. No, I'm alright. You've still been so bright and full of life. Do you know what? I want my fucking love to live. Well, dull. It's difficult to see where this relationship is going. Actually, it's difficult to see much at all. You just don't get the bigger picture. I should have realised when the cracks started to appear. You're just not the phone you used to be. Fallen out of love with your mobile. The new Samsung Galaxy S9 features astonishing resolution on a razor-sharp infinity display. And right now at Carphone Warehouse, you can save £200 on a Samsung Galaxy S9. Available on selected 24-month contracts, £36 per month. No upfront charge was £239.99. T's and C's apply. Visit carphonewarehouse.com for details. Offer ends 11th of July. (laughs) Don't miss a drop. Get outdoors with the Land Rover Summer Sales Event from the 6th to the 8th of July. Enjoy 15% off all accessories and an additional £1,500 deposit contribution with 5.9% APR representative PCB finance. Search Land Rover Sales Event. Land Rover. Above and beyond. Selected models only. Credit subject status. UK 18 plus only. Terms and conditions apply. Black Horse Limited trading as Land Rover Financial Services. 15% off all accessories. Purchased alongside a vehicle between the 6th and 8th of July 2018. Subject to availability. A participating retailers only. When it comes to a great atmosphere, you need to... No bay, please. No bay. Let's go on here. Going. And I've got something unbelievable.
unbelievable to tell you. I proved me own beer. It's called Unbelievable. And it's available in participating Green King pubs throughout the summer. Download the Green King season ticket app and you get a free pint plus enjoy 10% off selected trips and football matches at 800 Green King season ticket pubs. Teams and teams apply. Always drink responsibly. Forget history. Forget the years of hell. Forget every game that has gone before, because all that matters is now. Brady's at the back post, and he's there in stoppage time. A gift to the nation, and even an auto The 2018 FIFA World Cup on ITV. Across the UK, online and on DAB. Talk radio, on the hour news headlines. Good morning, I'm Danielle Yamavietska. Police have confirmed a substance that's left two people critically ill in Wiltshire was the nerve agent Novichok. Test results from Porton Down show it's the same one that poisoned former Russian spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter in March. Officers are now looking into whether the cases could be linked. Met Police Assistant Commissioner Neil Basu gave an update earlier. The priority for the investigation team now is to establish how these two people have come into contact with this nerve agent. And I have around 100 detectives from the Counter-Terrorism Policing Network working solidly on this investigation alongside their colleagues from Wiltshire Police. He also said no one else had shown similar symptoms and cordons remain at some sites in Amesbury and Salisbury as a precaution. Police investigating the murder of a six-year-old girl on a Scottish island have given more details about a person they've arrested. The man being held is under the age of 18. Alicia McPhail's body was found in Woodland Thanks, three hours it's after she was reported missing on the Isle of Bute on Monday. He's gonna blow like the International Development Secretary was <laughs> yeah, awarded some? in the Commons after the couple of first minister in really the sign language in the chamber. Yeah. Penny Morden yeah. signed as well oh, as spoke no. as she made a statement That's about a global disability summit taking place in London this month. The conference will support the global effort to advance disability inclusion for some countries' most vulnerable people. Yeah. And rail workers on Northern will stage a fresh strike later this month in a long-running row over the role of guards on trains. RMT members will walk out for 24 hours on the 21st. A spokesperson says the unions agreed to meaningful talks early next week regarding the dispute. (laughs) Your weather dry with sunny spells, but some scattered showers may develop in the south and southeast throughout the day. (laughs) The Late Night Alternative with Ian Lee on Talk Radio. We have when 9-1000 is the telephone. Phone number, the late night alternative, weeknights from 10, uh, Monday to Friday on Talk Radio. Then Paul Ross comes in at 1 o'clock. Um, you can give us a call about anything um, you want. Oh, that's what I was going to talk about. Let me find the um, thing. I've tried to get him on the show, but he's 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 ignored my requests, so it's not going to happen. Let me just um, Indulge me, indulge me for two minutes while I try and find something I saw earlier on that I thought was really interesting. Um, oh, I'm not going to be able to find it now, am I? There it is. Um, ever heard of Ahmed Best? No. He's an actor. Mm. Nearly killed himself 20 years ago. Right. right. And he's posted a picture of the place where he nearly killed himself. There he is. That's him with his son. And um, the tweet is... Um, 20 years next year, I faced a media backlash that still affects my career today. This was the place I almost ended my life. It's still hard to talk about. I survived, and now this little guy is my gift for survival. Ever heard of him? No, I don't think I have. Jar Jar Binks. Wow. Isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah. It's Jar Jar Binks. And, um... Uh, and, and Jar Jar Binks, of course, is is the most hated character in Star Wars uh, history. It was in one of the the three prequels, um, and um, and I've never really bought into that because I only saw the three prequels a couple of years ago, and I thought they were all right. I thought the first one was a bit bit long and a bit dull, but actually, I thought the second and the third ones were all right. And um, and I thought Jar Jar Binks was fine. I I, I could see why he irritated people. But I, was, I thought he was fine, but. Um, there was a huge, why is this character in it? George Lucas has ruined everything. Blah, blah, blah. I've never really thought of it. Then I just saw this tweet today. Ahmed Best. 
20 years next year, I faced... I'll read it again, now you know who he is. 20 years next year, I faced a media backlash that still affects my career today. A picture of him and his son has got to be about, I don't know, 10, 12. And they're looking out at the uh, port, at, at the sea. This was the place I almost ended my life. It's still hard to talk about. I survived, and now this little guy is my gift for survival. Isn't that incredible? The, um... And this is the thing, this is the thing, and it's all to do partly with my relationship with Twitter, is that if you are uh, on the radio, or, or you write books, or in movies, then you are, to a lot of people, you are not a real person. And, you know, if you were to go up to someone working in boots, or someone working in an office, or a bus driver, and continually, every day, you and your mates went up to that person, the woman working in boots, and went, you are shit at your job. You, you are the worst, because this is the worst service I've ever had. And do you know what? It's your fault. And do you know what? You're ugly. You're really ugly. And I hope your children know what a terrible, terrible mother you are. And I hope that you die a painful death. And I, I just hate everything about you. If groups of people went into boots and said that to a woman behind the till or a woman driving a bus or a bloke working in an office. People, you, people, people would be rightfully upset. And but because you're an actor, oh, but, but no, ah, you've signed up for that. No, you haven't. Because you're a, this guy's an actor, and it's before Twitter, obviously. But still, you know, like uh, twenty years ago, yeah, message boards would have been big. Message boards would have been huge. Nineteen ninety eight, ninety nine, uh, particularly with the geeks that kind of love Star Trek, uh, Star Wars. Oops. So there would have been loads of online stuff, different from how we have it now, but loads of online stuff. And of course there was in the press. And the fact that I hadn't even seen these films, but I knew that everyone thought Jar Jar Binks was an irritant. Um, and, and you don't... I never, I never considered the person behind it. And the impact that that negativity would have on their life. And it drove the poor bloke to go and stand at the iron ledge and consider killing himself. Isn't that amazing? I've tweeted him, and he, he seems to reply to a few tweets. He's not replied to mine, and I've asked him to come on the show, and who knows he might do. I, I suspect he won't. Um, but I just thought it was... I, I said, you know, I'd love to come on and talk about it. I think he's, he's going to do a one-man show at some point, is what he's kind of hinting at. Uh, and that would be great. And there's loads of nice comments on there afterwards um, from, um, you know, kind of... Well, lots of people with blue ticks, so they must be important. From Frank Oz who did Yoda. Frank Oz does Yoda. Um, loads of people like that. And, um, I just thought it was, it was, I just, I just felt guilty for not having considered the human being. And uh, was shocked, and I shouldn't re be really, but I was shocked at how low that person, that human being had been made to feel, just because he played a character in a film that, that a lot of people didn't like. There's nothing like fandom, though for um kind of mob mentality hatred yeah 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 because there's a feeling of this is my childhood how dare you defile it with you you coming in i've known about this for years yeah. this is part of my you know this is part of my life and you've come and wandered in and ruined it and there's a picture of him and he he still looks like a young bloke i can't quite tell and he's he's wearing um uh he's wearing wookie pyjama trousers and Yoda slippers. So, you know, it looks like he's made peace with his life. What can we tell from a tweet and a picture? Absolutely nothing, of course. I'm kind of guessing here and I'm joining up a lot of dots. Uh, but if you want to tweet him, it's at Ahmed, A-H-M-E-D, best. And, um, yeah, I just saw that today and I thought, oh, oh, all right, that's interesting and well done for um, for speaking up about it. Uh, it says, his bio is addicted to innovation, obsessed with culture, make art. All right, man. Well, good, good for you. Well done. I hope things work out for you, and I hope. Well, yeah, fingers crossed, we'll get him on the show. But no worries if not. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand is the telephone number. Here's Nigel. Uh, hi, Ian. Hello, Nigel. How, how are you? I'm um, right. very, very well. How's the, how's mum? Oh uh, well, I've been in to see her for the last well every day for a week over a week now. Yeah. Right? Today, today she's got a water infection and um, 
she was delirious and hardly knew me. Don't worry, they know. can, because my my mum gets those quite often, like, a couple of days no, on she, antibiotics, she, she'll uh, be fine. She couldn't talk to me, because no. she was all shaky as well. Yeah, yeah, um, no, they, 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 honestly, they start hallucinating, all kinds of things. Two days on the antibiotics, she'll really? be fine with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because she thought she dropped something on the floor and yeah. she didn't. Yeah, she's delirious. She's hallucinating. Because some of it's her age, though, isn't it? Because she's 88. No, uh, uh, well, the, the hallucinations won't be. If it, she's got a urine uh, infection. It, uh, well, they, put, they were going to put her on a drip this afternoon. Okay, well, then that's the right is thing that, to do. Is that an antibiotic? It could I, It could be. I, 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 j all I can they, do they, is speak. They said she'd be a lot better tomorrow. The, the, well, then, the they've get, they're, to... then they're giving her antibiotics and that will clear the, uh, that uh, infection one, up. Sorry, sorry, one... Yeah, but to see her in, to see her in that, yes, it was a big shock. It's upsetting. You know, it's, very, it's very upsetting. Yeah, uh, and uh, it was so upsetting. I know it's upsetting. I, I didn't know who to talk to about it. Well, you can talk to me about it, mate. I know that's why I rang you. Well, well then there we go. Then, then I've never. It's, it's the biggest thing that's happened in my life to see her go through all this. Yeah. It's, honestly, um, I know, I know when my when my dad died, um, he did have like cancer, which we kn we knew he was going to die. But this seems to be worse watching her suffer. I well, mean, he wasn't in any pain, my dad, yeah, with cancer. Yeah. Okay. But she she's um she's not herself, you no. know, and she's it's awful to watch her. Nigel, story. Nigel, listen I'm to sorry. me. Listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> The, the, uh, I've, cause my mum gets a water infection about three times a year, right? And she talks rubbish and she thinks that my dad, she, she sees all really? kinds of things. Yeah. It goes so quickly with antibiotics, it doesn't last very oh. long. Well, well she can... won't forget me then. No, she won't forget you, mate. She'll forget you for a couple of days. She, she didn't welcome me. It's as if she didn't yeah. know I was there. Yeah, that's because she, she can't see you, that's why, because of this infection. Uh, Seriously, the uh, antibiotics will clear it up in two days, I'm sure of it. And then she's supposed to be going to um, a cottage hospital to, to get better. Nice. That sounds you know, nice. Uh, a special, which is nearer to me to visit her perfect. as well. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Uh, I know, but I'm so lonely because she's yeah. always been here for me. <laughs> um, do you have you ever called the Samaritans, Nigel? Yes, I have. Yes, when you, my dad died. Have you yes, called them? Because yes. you know that they're free. It's a free mm. number. Yes. And it means and that you don't ever have to be on your own. It, it, no, I'm glad you're talking, calling that. us, but yeah. you can call them as well. So I've, I've actually got a girlfriend coming to see me tomorrow, and anyway. I've got a girlfriend that I see quite... She's coming over tomorrow. Well, that's she, great. She might actually stay the night with me, which would cheer me up. Okay, you know? well, that's great that you've got a friend that's coming what? over. Yeah, she, I've known her for several years. Beautiful. She's, nice. she's very... Well, she's understanding. If she, if she can't uh, stay for whatever reason, don't be too upset, yeah. okay? Try not to be Oh, no, upset. no, she, 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 I've just been talking to her and she said that uh, she'll give me a cuddle and, and comfort me. Okay. Which is very nice of her to okay, do. Okay, that, that, okay. She's single, right? Single. Okay. Yeah. Well. So, anyway. Human, oh, con human, contact so, human contact can be so, human contact can be so important at, at times like this. Yes, it is, and that's why I've been talking to her more, really, Good. as well. Good, Um, my song, Nigel's Time, could you play that, please, again? I, oh. <laughs> But there is another one on there, but you can't fast forward it on on um, uh, YouTube, can you? Um, well, I was. Can you go to the next song. Well, it? remind me what I've got to type in because because it, it's on well, you. It was the Wurlitzer. It, it was Nigel from Maystone, the Wurlitzer. All right, Nigel. Um, jukebox. Is the, the other song? Jukebox. Is the other song? Um, Joker. What the Steve Miller song? No, this is called the Joker that someone out they wrote the same person wrote for me about. Right. You know. Okay, well, let me see I where we are. Here we go. That's it. All right. Yeah, that's it. The joke. All right, let me never get. Been played before. Never been played on oh. the radio. Before. Oh, we've got a world premiere. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well then. All right. Stay. Here we go. I'm gonna play it now. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I have a feeling this is going to be quite prophetic. I run for gold, 
Maybe I'm old, but my heart won't go. After all, That's song. my life has changed. Now I'm a joker laughing in your face. Because all that I've done, look out how. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand impromptu game of uh, yes or s is this yes or s bearing in mind Nigel's still listening oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand we'll take call straight to air is this the yes word or the s word? Got like thirty seconds of click. Line three, yes word or S word? Yes, 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 it's brilliant, Nigel. Well done. Hey, let's go to line four, yes word or S word? It's Nigel time, it's Nigel time, this is not a bag of shy. Okay, well hard harsh but fair. Line four, yes word or S word? I can Hello, Paul. What you reckon? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 Nigel's music is, is fab. I love it. Thank you, Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney. Line five. Yes word or S word? Brilliant. Yes. All righty. Here we go. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. Line five. Yes word or S word? Nigel actually has a really beautiful voice. Thank you very much indeed. Because all that I've done, I will be yes word or S word? It's a yes from me. Thank you very much. Line six, yes word or S word? It's a massive yes word. One of the best songs that you've ever had. Wowzers, line five, yes word or S word? Well, well, yes. Thank you very much. And the last call of the night, yes word or S word? Definitely yes word. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Let's take one more. Line six, yes word or S word? It is the biggest yes I've ever given. Thank you very much indeed. Nigel, people love it! Oh, thanks ever so much. Thanks ever so much. You're welcome. Nigel, best of luck to you and your mum, man. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. This is Talk Radio. Talk radio. Dial up. Some go. dialogue. Talk radio. Yeah, I know. Get you talking. And here at the construction site cup, the contractor team is down to ten men. But wait, they're bringing on a super subby. A few, in fact. Brickies, sparkies, chippies. What a hat trick. Looks like this contractor and these subcontractors used some great tactics and went to supersubby.com, where contractors find subbies and subbies find contractors by skills, location, and trade. It's free for subbies with a three-month free trial for contractors. So download the free app or visit Supersubby.com. Supersubby, the new, smarter way to find site work or workers. And there's Mike Simmons onto the forecourt, approaches the T Rock, but picks out the Tiguan. Looking at a seven seater Tiguan all space now. He spies the Tuareg, promising, but he's leaving it late. A quick exchange with the Volkswagen salesman, and yes, Mike Simmons is the proud owner of a brand new Volkswagen Tuareg. The Volkswagen SUV event from the 1st to the 15th of July. Save £500 on top of existing offers when you test drive any SUV. Just make sure you get there before the final whistle. Offer available on the retail on the road price for Volkswagen SUVs and test driven on orders between 1st and 15th July. Delivered by 15th August 2018. Except the new Touareg, which is to be delivered by 31st October 2018. Retail customers only. We got it at Selco. Selco, it's where the trade goes. At Selco Builders Warehouse, we've got real deals on a wide range of trade quality building products. In July, we've got 50 mil IKO Enerfirm 2400 by 1200 mil insulation boards for only 22.49 each X fat. Now that's a real deal. We've got even more real deals at Selco Builders Warehouse. For more information,
information, see cellcobw.com. We've got it at Cellco. Cellco, it's where the trade go. At Green Flag, we think the AA are great. They've won bucketfuls of awards. They'll give you unlimited call-outs when you get in a pickle. Mmm, pickle. And they cover 100% of the UK. Very good indeed. So why do we think that is so great? Because Green Flag do all of this too. And we'll have you AA renewal quote. Green Flag, common sense to the rescue. There may be a charge for call with the same problem. Savings based on our closest equivalent UK vehicle cover for vehicles 10 years and under. T's and C's apply. Moonlit musings from mums, madams, Ooh. and meat packers. Oh, never mind, I must have misheard. The Late Night Alternative with Ian Lee. The station's brilliant. On Talk Radio. 0344. Four nine nine one thousand. Let's go to Sean. Good evening, Sean. What would you like to say on the radio to about sixty-five thousand people? Sixty-five thousand. Thank you very much, sir. Very, very kind. I just wound up to give a bit of love to Nigel. Oh, go on then. How would you like to give him that love? I would just like to say that I appreciate his work and I think he's a bit of a genius, unlike yourself and a bit like your female colleague. No, nah, I don't mean that. I don't mean that really. No, nah, you, you too. You too. You too. Have we ever spoken before, Sean? Probably, I don't no, we're not going to speak again. Good evening, Dale. Hello. Oh, hang on a minute. Someone's having a strum. <laughs> Sorry, I was, uh, I was, uh, tuning my guitar. It's a bit hot, so maybe, uh... uh Have I'm you been masturbating it? Oh, God. Sorry? Nothing? I wanted to sing you a song that's about an hour old. Um, as long as it's not an hour long, then I can dig it. About two minutes... Well, it's not... Uh, it's about ha half a minute at the moment, because that's all I've written. Let's hear 30 seconds of a brand new song. And then I wanted to play your Paul McCartney song, if that's all right. <laughs> well, let's, let's see how the first 30 Even seconds... Even if the sun no, should enough. fall down from the sky, my love for you will never die. As long as you are standing near to me, as long as you are standing near to me. And even if the circus has a turn of love, I want to pick you up in love. love. As long as you are standing near to me, me. look into the moon and I hear your name. My song will always be the same. It just couldn't wait without you. It's a song about having sex standing up, is it? Sorry? Is it a song about having sex standing up? Um, upside down. Because I heard the line, I want to pick you up with my love. That's, oh dear. That's, a, that's standing up. I mean, I'm sex. gonna pick you up with my love, Ian, please. Oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick you up with my love. Even if the moon mm. should fall down from okay. the sky. Okay. Oh, he's gonna do it so uh, hard. That's the wrong verse anyway. Even if a million ships fall down from the sky. Even if the sun should fall down from the sky. That's not gonna happen. No, uh, even if the rain should fall down from the sky, sorry. Okay. That's definitely gonna happen. Um, yeah. Um, okay. And then, I, and then I was gonna play your blackbird. Oh, I bet you can't. I told you you can. Oh, three, four, 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 nine, nine, one thousand is the telephone number. Don't write songs unless you're a professional songwriter. Is my tip to everybody. Don't, don't try. Don't even try. I wish someone had lift me up with their love. Oh, cheeky cow! Chance would be a fine thing, don't you think so, boys? Trying to come up with a catchphrase, and that's the best I've got so far. Yeah. Okay. Was it flying ant day today? Well, something was splattered on my windscreen yeah, a lot. Yeah, because I got, I got something in my eye. Oh, chance would be a fine thing, wouldn't it, boys? Boys makes it sound like I'm a paedophile. What do you think? Oh, I've got one. Um, yeah, something went into my eye. Oh, chance would be a fine thing, wouldn't it, fellas? <laughs> oh. Um... Yeah, my windscreen was like a, a, a plaster as that, wireless. That catchphrase doesn't work because it involves me being a homosexual in the 1970s and, um... Well, just change I the wasn't. voice a bit. Um, uh, no, the, 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 the metaphor you use there... I know. ...is, um, yeah. for... Yeah. I was, I know, I was modifying it. I, got I was a... reclaiming it for the, um, finance. Mm. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh. Yeah, I've got them in the eye. 
today. Uh, I think I might have got one in my mouth uh -huh. as well. Yeah. Most things happen. But, um, Dale, we lost you. You cut off just at the, just right at the very, very end of Blackbird. I did. Yeah, just at the end. We heard most of it. Just the end we missed. But it was great. It was great. Oh, my God. Well, thank you. Yeah, it was absolutely... We loved it. Uh, yeah, it. Yes, is that Dale? Hello, caller. Hello, yeah. yeah. yeah it was absolutely brilliant. How long have you been playing the guitar for? Um, I don't know. I was in the mental health unit for a year. Uh-oh, now I feel bad. Okay. No. Okay. No, no. Why, what did you say? Um, you said something bad about me. Yeah, I did. I said I was going to come kill you. <laughs> the song was bad. Did you say my song was bad? No, I didn't say your song was bad. <laughs> Catherine pressed the cut-off button. Oh, so even if the song is bad. Anyway, here goes. Oh, no, do it again. This time you've got to let him play it. Yes? He's testing us by saying hello to us. Like this time. The in the dead of night. Crosby Stills and Nash. Take these dark eyes and let us see all your life. Life. Oh, oh, You're only waiting for this moment to rise. Yeah, tempo out the window. I said he couldn't play it. This is all over the place, man. And now a cast. It's how Cass would maybe sing it. Oh, like birds singing in Dead of Night. Oh, racism. Yep. No, 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 no. Yo, it's, it's, quite, it's quite a racist song. It's about Diana Ross. Mm -hmm. That's a true story. It's about Diana Ross, a black bird. That's what it's about. Oh, well, I didn't know that. Um, so what was it like in a mental unit? Oh, it was, um, um, I believe in... I met someone uh, who was really influential on me and uh, sort of changed, you know. Good. Uh, for the better, I changed hope. Changed me a little bit. Sorry? For the change for the better, I hope. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes. What do you, what do, you do in a mental unit? Now, obviously, you do therapy and you talk you talk through things, I would imagine, and you take medication. But what do you, what do, you do for the rest of the time? Well, um... Uh, it's funny, uh, uh, it came at the right point in my life, I mean, something always, something always happened to me, Ian, yeah. basically. Yeah. And, and uh, um, I think I'm very lucky with that. Good, so, good. You know. Luck's a good thing to have on your side. How long have you been out? Yeah. Um, oh, it's, it's a year now or so. Okay. nice one, man, and you, you're doing okay, yeah? I'm, I'm doing great, Ian. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. Good. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to hear it, Dale. Thank you, man. No worries. Take care, man. Bye bye. Um, Sarah. Good evening, Sarah. Hello. Hello, Sarah. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. What can we do for you this evening? Well, I just wanted to say thank you for giving out sort of information on the Samaritans to Nigel, who was feeling a bit down. I forgot to I give really him the number, and because and, 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 he was yeah. a little bit distracted, and I, f I forgot yeah. to give him the number, but I will give out the number in a second in case he's listening. Thank you for reminding because, me. Because, you know, the help they do give is invaluable. I used to be a Samaritan myself. Oh, well done. And, and I've also been on the other side, where I've suffered with sort of mental health problems and depression, so I know, you know, just having someone to, to listen to you, like you were listening to him tonight, can yeah. be can be a big help, and I think that you probably helped him a lot by just chatting to him and playing the song for him, and I thought it was really nice. I think that, I, hey, listen, I've called the Samaritans myself a couple of times as well, yeah. and they've just talked me off the, um, the metaphorical ledge, uh, so to speak. Um, sure. did we help him? I don't know, but I do think that, you know, part of the job of a late-night phone-in show should be that anyone can phone up, whether they're happy, sure. sad, you know, rich or poor, or struggling or not, and, um, have a little outlet whether that be musical or miserable or whatever you know it's this no, is exactly. the drop-in center for people I think it's great. thank you well, and thank i do you. think you probably do having listened to the callers that have come on since nigel that you probably are um an outlet for some people who are lonely and perhaps just sitting at home listening and it's a bit of company for them listening to you talking maybe watching you either on youtube or periscope which is how i came across you ah. and um 
and um, and then and it's nice that they feel they've been up and touch with like an old friend. I hope so because I'm lonely, Sarah. I don't say that lightly. Mm. I'm lonely, and um, yeah. uh, it, it, it's uh, that's a very kind thing of you to say. So thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Hey, nice one. What are you, what, yeah. what are you, what are you doing up so late at night? It's 12, I just thought it was 12.30. Oh. Um, I, I run a quiz show, uh, a quiz show, a quiz thing at my local on a, on a Wednesday night. Oh. Uh, not long, not long got in. Can and you... It was a big, uh, 4th of July American quiz. Oh, give thing. us, give us a question. Can you give me a question? We, we'll do it. I'm brilliant at quizzes. Um, oh gosh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Let me see. Here we go. Me and Kath are on the buzzers, okay? Me versus Kath, Sarah, and I'm going to destroy Kath. Two seconds. Yeah. I you take one. your time, don't you worry, because it'll give time to Kath to come up with an excuse for doing badly. <laughs> huh? Right. You keep I talking, mate. Weird. Keep talking. Oh, she left, she left the questions in the pub. No, 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 they're here. Hold on. Right, general knowledge. Here we go. Um, which wind of North America shares its name with a helicopter? Santa Ana. No. Nope. Chinook. Chinook. Yes. Okay, right, Catherine, you didn't get that. So uh, I got that. It's one nil to no, me. No, you no, 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 no. You're not allowed guesses. Oh, uh, you could, 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 it's a you quiz. Got it wrong. You got it wrong, it's mate. It's a quiz. You got it wrong. All right, all right fine. Wrong. Okay, move on. Move on. Okay. Um, what canal joins the Pacific and Atlantic? Suez. Oceans? No. No. Panama. Yes. Thank you. You're not allowed to go. Oh, so it's gone from you're not allowed guesses to you're not allowed to go. You know where the Suez Canal is? It's, it's going to be right up your jacksey. All right, so it's, it, you know, I've got, even though, for the record, I've got two questions right, Sarah, it's nil-nil. You would have written those down on your paper first, oh, right? All right, fine. Shut okay. it. She has got a point. She has got a point now. Well, but, but she, yeah, she's got a point. None of us have got any points. Right, okay, let's try again. Okay, Thank you, Sarah. I'll give you another one then, um, a music <laughs> one. In which year oh. did Michael Jackson release his first breakthrough album, Off the Wall, uh, which sold seven... <laughs> in the United States? I know. 79. No! It's 79. 79. Yeah, but I was going to say, we're buzzing in. I buzzed in. Buzz in the first two times. No, Sarah? Mm. Adjudicator? I would say whoever said it first gets the point. <laughs> that would be me. Right, well, let's... Okay, now we know the rules. We'll start again. So it's nil-nil. Here no, we go. No, no! I'm having it. Well, I'm having the other two, then. It's not fair, is it, Sarah? No, it's not. Sarah, no, I I'm Sorry, I have to... And I'm not just saying it, you did say the answer first. Okay, Sarah, let's go on. Next next question, please. It's one nil to okay. Catherine. Okay. Which U.S. This is, uh, which U.S. territory became a state in 1907 Hawaii. and was the subject of a 1943 musical? Hawaii. No. Incorrect answer. Right, I've got a bit okay. of time. Go could on. you re could you repeat the question, uh, please? Yes, I can. Which U.S. territory? became a state in 1907 and was the subject of a 1943 musical. 1943 musical? 1943 musical. Don't be telling him, Sam. Sam's not, Sam's not telling me. Yes, he is. Sam is not telling me. Sam is not... So, 1943... Sarah, even. Sorry? No, Sam's through the glass cheating. Yeah, oh, oh, oh yeah, Sam, he's right. not, he's not cheating. Um, 19... 1943 musical, that's also a state... Oklahoma. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. Don't give me clues. Oklahoma uh, is the correct answer. Give us right. So this is the fi the deciding the question. Okay. Thank you, sir. Bless you. You've spent all night doing the quiz, and now you've got two idiots <laughs> bullying you into <laughs> doing another quiz. One, you mean? Yeah, exactly. Okay, one more. Um, Chicago borders which of the five Great Lakes? <gasps> I don't know any of the lakes. Mm. Districts? No. Um... Can I give you an easier question? Well, ha no, hang on. Hang on. They're only easy if you know them. So you should, um, um, I, I, I'm gonna go for a guess. Lake yes. Michigan. Correct. Oh! 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 Daddy's home! Daddy's home! Oh, it's bedtime! Daddy's home! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! No, we don't need an easier question, Sarah, because that one was easy enough for me. Da Daddy's home! Daddy needs to sit down. Daddy's home! Well Thank you, Sarah. Nice to speak well to you, Sarah. Done, well you, done, you well could, any time you've got, you want to try out some quiz questions, you have two willing subjects here. <laughs> well, well, okay. You're a good sport. Yeah, I do them every two weeks, so maybe oh, you look Come up. back on again any time. Thank you very much, Sarah. But before we go to the break... <laughs> Daddy's home! Victory Daddy's home! Daddy's home! Daddy's home!
Daddy's home! It's bedtime for little baby! Daddy's home! Daddy's home! Daddy's home! It's bedtime for little baby! It's bedtime for little baby! Daddy's home! Daddy's home! Go to the break! The Big Bold Eagle of Broadcasting is on Talk Radio. So our breath. Thank you, Daddy's home in my face. The legendary James Whale. Only a fucking new would come up with an idea like that. Fucking destroys you. I destroyed. Do you know what you mean? I am sick of it. I know it's not the ugly. Speed limit on our motorways is far too low. It needs to be 80 miles an hour at least. Come at the hour. Come at the hour. You can come on the air. You can have your say because this is a free country at the moment. The James Whale Show. That's a great life. That's a great life. It's bedtime, Daddy. Um, lip service for lovers and loners and lounge and lizards. <laughs> the late night alternative with Ian Lee. I've got your name already, excuse me. On Talk Radio. By the way, since when does, do I call you Daddy? Weirdo. <laughs> Daddy's home! Oh! That was the most disturbing two seconds of my life. Shall we, uh. Should we go to an easy question? Yes, please. I no. never said yes, please. Yeah, I never yeah, said yes, please. Yeah, no, we won't. Let's. Well, you're, you're, ma- you're making up your own history you've, now. You've given us a question. Let's focus on that question. Take that call, Sam. That's a great call. Oh, so you're out of breath now, aren't you? I'm, I'm absolutely effed. Good evening, Brian. How are you doing? Um, I'm over the over the moment. I destroyed my best mate in a quiz. Oh, I, I've been listening, but then I had to turn it down because I was phoning you. Now. Te- out, technically, out. technically, it was four-one, but I'm happy with two-one. Four-one, two-one. Yeah. Oh, there you go. But I, I love Cass, though, so. All right, all right. Thank I'll, you. I'll, I'll give her more points than you. Well, Thank yeah, you well, you, you, yeah. The points you hand out are willy-nilly. Really? They're irrelevant points. My points were earned because I knew things, so my points are good. Mine's, mine's is good points. Anyway, carry on, Brian. Got good points. You're, you're, you're a nine, cap ten, so that's fair enough, isn't it? Um, yeah, but in what? In 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 terms of being most popular with perverts that phone up radio shows, we're wicked. Catherine can have that. I don't Ka- know, you do quite Ka- well. Catherine can... <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not a pervert, so... Um... Oh, you don't sound like one. No, perverts fancy sheep. Sorry? <laughs> no, I, just, I was just wondering on um, listening to the call, cause I, I was saying to you, your colleague that um, it couldn't... Um, Sam's not old enough to be a colleague. Yes? Go on. Um, he put me through, but... Um, Listening to the, le- the previous call about mental health and things like that. Yes. Have you have you not um, to be quite straight with you, which you might not like. Uh oh, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Yes, go. On. Get to the meat and two veggies. Uh, when you spoke to that lady, you said um, about mental health and places and staying places and this. Have you not had to? Um, seek advice and stay in a a place where you needed help i don't understand your question try it again maybe i'm being obtuse try it again well uh what i'm saying is i know from mental health background is the 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 previous call you you know you were listening to what she said yes but what i'm trying to say is as you as a person, Ian, we, you, you probably can't actually say on on ra- live radio, but have you not had to do the same? He's asking whether you've been sectioned. No, I don't think he is asking whether I've been sectioned, are you? Are you no, not asking? No, no, not, not you're not, you're asking no, no, have no, I... No, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, he's not. I, I think he's asking have I never had to work somewhere where uh, people were dicks? Is no, that... Uh, I, not sectioned. I was asking, have you not uh, voluntary, you know, had to go oh. and stay in a place where you needed help? No. With therapy or... No. no. You haven't? No. Never? I don't think so. Why? What do you say? It sounds like you know more about me than I do. Well, I, I just I just know other celebrities that have had to do that. And, um, right. I was just wondering... When the way you were talking to that lady, the, 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 you sure that's never happened, has it? <laughs> it's all been out of out of. I out think. Of. Let me think. Let me think. Because um, 
yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I I'm surprised you don't believe me. No, I do believe you, uh, but... Um... You're, you're asking the same question several times. No, I've never... I've As far as I'm, I can remember, maybe I was under very strong medication, I have never stayed in a treatment centre or a recovery unit or a mental health unit. Well, you know, okay. Oh. So, 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 so when, the other night when you were talking about, like, the psychotic behaviour and different things, did, yeah. did you just do that on your, did you go to your local therapist and... No, I was off my face way? on drugs. I was high on drugs. Yeah, I know, but when, when you recovered, I mean... Yes, yes. Did you not go to like certain doctors and therapists and, and get get um, reassigned to a certain place and the different things? No. No. Well, may I ask why are you asking? What's going on with you? Um. What's going on with me is that um. It's quite a difficult question, but, um, yeah, I have, um, suffered with anxiety yeah. since I was about 11, and I'm 40 now. Right. And, um, I obviously, as a young age, you know what, what all that was about, and yeah. then you go through, you go to university, and you get drunk and get pissed and take too many drugs, and... Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Probably similar. And so have um, you have you been somewhere then? Have you been to a residential medical treatment centre? I have, yeah, yeah. Thought so. I, uh, but it costs me um, a lot of money. Yeah, they can be expensive. Well, you're looking at um, what are you looking at seven hundred pound a day. Um, seven hundred pounds a day. That's a very expensive one. Yes. Hmm. No, no, that, 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 the, the way the, um, I'm, I'm not, I've been waiting for three months for NHS to, um, have an appointment with the consultant and prior to that I had to go to a private hospital and a private doctor, he was charging £240 an hour. Yes. And, um, probably spent... Right, seven hundred pounds. Seven hundred. Yeah, seven hundred pounds a day is five. It's five thousand pounds a week, and I know that um, five thousand pounds a week. I was offered a place in the Priory for about four thousand pounds a week, which I didn't take. I didn't go because I, I didn't. I'd rather spend the money on cocaine. Um, so, so if you were staying, that's true. So, well, actually, it was less. It was about three and a half thousand pounds a week. So, if you were staying somewhere for five thousand pounds a week, that's that's going to be a pretty swanky place to be. Did it work? Um, it, I was there for six weeks and it did work at the time and then... How did you manage to uh, afford it? How did I manage to afford it? I spent all my savings. Right. That's a heck of a lot of savings. I know. And, um... £30,000. That, that's why I had to stop. The, the consultant was excellent, but yeah. 240 pounds an hour, once a week, who can afford that? Um, well, you might be able to afford that, but I, I couldn't. Please don't make assumptions about what I can afford. Um, but I, I, uh, 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 these figures sound very, very high to me. Almost, I'm going to say, almost unrealistically high. No, 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 not at all. No, not unrealistic at all. Yeah, un yeah. unrealistically oh, high. I mean, excess right. excessively, excessively high. Five grand a week. And, a, a, and what was it, a therapist you were seeing at £240 an hour? Yeah, the therapist was two hundred and forty pounds an hour, and then he he delegated me to go and stay uh, a place. Which place? Um, well, I don't know what I should. I'm, I don't know what I should mention the place. You don't have to if you uh, don't want to. I'm just you're just curious. Cause I don't think it's fair on them, um, but it, 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 it was. What um, did they do in this place? Um, they took me, uh, um, for six, my, my, my family, um, realised I needed help and, um, I got dropped off there and I was there for six weeks and in that place it was 
You get your obviously meals. Yeah, now what did they do day. in that place? Tell, tell me what the, what they did. I'm gonna be honest, I don't, I don't believe you. Um, you don't, I, well, I, I can't believe you don't believe me. I, 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 well, I can't uh, believe you don't, you can't believe that I don't believe you, because it all sounds made up. Because I'll be honest, Brian, this call is gonna start, start off, you know, very, very weirdly, with you asking some very personal questions and then not believing me when I gave you a very honest answer. Well, um, and, and, okay, and now you're speaking, you. you're speaking, you're speaking, you, you, the figures you're talking about are, um, I've looked at some really expensive places and they weren't as expensive as you. And I've seen some expensive therapists and they're not as expensive as the figures you're saying. And well, the, the therapist, uh, Ian, he has clients all over the world. Mate, I've got a therapist, you know, we can, we can um, measure our, our therapist dicks. My, mine sees I'm films. Not making... No, but mine sees, fil sees film stars and rock stars, but, but, well, but, so but, but, so, so did mine, yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, listen. As long as it worked, for, as long as it worked for you, man. I don't want to get into an argument no, with you. But no, I, I'm not arguing. I'm, so, I, no. I, I'm just saying that that's how much it was to see him every hour. Okay. And it, exactly what you said. Yeah. Is is right. And are you feeling okay? Well, let, let's 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 move on from that. Are you feeling better? Did it work? Um, I left the place maybe six. Eight months ago, yeah, and, and how's it, life? It, it was really good, and um, I can relate to everything you've said in the past. Good. All right. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad things to, are on to, 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 total de to, total okay. life degree. Okay. Well, I'm glad things are on the mend, Brian. That's uh, that's great news. Uh, Dion, stay there. Come to you after this. I did not believe a word of that. And on DAB. Strange vibe, man. But I don't want to get into an argument with him. It's, it's, it's a point of argument. Plus, you'll get our best connection whether you're using our fastest fiber speeds at home. I did not believe a word of it. But look, look at your name. It's like, yeah, whatever. Or extra 4G speed with double mobile data when you're out and about. Yeah, I could just see us go, you know. There's Where no point, is there? Thanks for the call. Whatever you're doing, you won't miss a beat. Mm. New BT Plus, beat. fiber and 4G oh, together. No, Our best connection in and out the home. BT, be that. Keep connected promise, extra speed 4G and double data on BT Mobile. Speed varies by location, coverage and demand. Hello, I'm here at a McDonald's mm. drive through with Steve who oh, witnessed oh, something oh, legendary. Oh, what oh, happened? Well. I was just driving when I saw a guy eating they'll, they'll a crispy call back lunch and breast filling with they'll delicate they'll peppery call. notes in a bakehouse roll. No, no, no. And then? No, no, no. I hurried over to this drive through and I've been trying to decide which sauce to have. Smoke it up. Sure. Now, with your choice of cool mayo, hot and spicy mayo or barbecue sauce, experience the chicken legend range at McDonald's. Served from 10.30am, subject to availability, participating restaurants only. <laughs> It doesn't matter how our customers feed back to us, but it matters that we listen. Which is why we've added the new Ford Transit Courier to the Transit range. It's still as hard-working, versatile and reliable as the rest of the Transit range, but is now available with a new optional 6-inch colour touchscreen, voice control, DAB and sat-nav. So whether you're delivering sourdough to Swindon, T-shirts to Tooting or doing plumbing in Perth, the Transit Courier can carry your business further. When business demands, we deliver at ford.co.uk. Ford. Together, we go further. Across the UK, online and on DAB. The incredible new sound of talk radio. The no-nonsense breakfast with Julia Hartley Brewer. The biggest breaking news stories, headline-grabbing guests and razor-sharp opinion. Join me, Julia Hartley Brewer, when I'll be turning up the heat every morning from 6.30 with an essential mix of straight-talking debate, heavyweight political guests and fearless call. Waking up the nation with a brand new breakfast conversation. The no-nonsense Breakfast with Julia Hartley Brewer. This morning from 6.30. On Talk Radio. Experience the unconventional. Hello. The unpredictable. Don't you think that's a bit weird? And the completely unorthodox. It was my birthday. With rule-free Ian Lee. Uh, I was just trying to generate a bit of content. The Late Night Alternative with Ian Lee. Hate alarm clock. Hate going to work. On Talk Radio. Uh, Paul Ross will be on at one. Good evening, Dion. Yeah, good evening to you. Good evening, Dion! <laughs> nice to speak to you, buddy. What's happening in Langley? Um, it's quiet. I've got a mate in the other room. Uh, Dead? And I'm just chilling out now. 
Is he dead? No, he's not. Not yet. The night is still young. <laughs> How would you... Right, serious question, because Dion used to be a killer, and he doesn't like me talking about it, and that's <laughs> fine. Right. <laughs> best best way to kill someone um, who's, who's um, like, just staying in your house. Garot them? Cheese wire? Um, crossbow bolt. <laughs> bit obvious, isn't it, Dion? Bit messy. Oh, this guy's, this guy, he's a professional. How many people have you killed, Catherine? No one's caught before. He's it. killed, well, that's true. A crossbow, bolt, beautiful. But notice he didn't say with a crossbow. Just the bolt. <laughs> love it, mate. I love your style. I love the vibe of this guy. He's a player. What have you got for us tonight, Dion? Well, you're on about hospitals and things. That's yes. Not what I'm up for. I did a detox. Yeah. Um, when was it? Uh, October, November 2013. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was just drinking too much pressure at work and everything. Yeah. So I put myself into a clinic in Thailand. Yeah, I was only in there about ten. It months. wasn't. It wasn't a cave in Thailand, was it? <laughs> Thailand. Oh, Thailand. Okay, Thailand. But imagine there's, uh, those those poor <laughs> lads stuck in Thailand. No, it's Thailand. Oh, <laughs> ball. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> By the way, those boys are still in the cave in Thailand, and... I know, I've been catching up on some it. Some story, isn't it, Dion? It's brilliant, isn't it? Uh, well, well, some kids stuck in a cave. It, it's a fascinating story. How, we talked about this yesterday. There are four ways of de de dealing with it. How would you get those guys out? Well, the two guys that went in, they put a line down, obviously. Yeah. Um, obviously, they can't... They haven't got a clue about scuba diving. So. No, and they've got to swim. There's a great Ill for those who do, don't know it. If you, the Daily Mail, I know it's a, it's a piece of shit, right? But yeah. there's a great picture. Um, they've well, got to swim. Great. They've got to swim 400 yards underwater, and that's down, down, down through a very, very narrow bit, down more than up 400 yards. And it's full of silt. You can't see yeah. anything. That is a tough old swim. That is, and they're kids. That is, and they can't swim. That is tough. I don't know. Personally, I think a professional diver, you know, they have a spare breathing thing yep. hooked onto them. Yep. Just take one of them a time with right. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. There's a bit that is there's a bit that is so narrow that when the divers pass through it, the professional divers pass through it, they have to take off their breathing equipment. Oh, for God's sake! So that means that there is a section at some point the kids have to go through it without breathing equipment. Jesus. Yeah, yeah Jesus, exactly. And I yeah. and I joked about it yesterday, but I'm really starting to think come round to the thinking that you leave them in there for four months. I, I, honestly, I've thought about this a lot. That that's the that's the safest option is to leave them in there for four months. If you see the shelf they're on though, and then they've got more monsoons, it could flood to the ceiling. Oh, and, uh, yeah, and the water can go up. The water can still yeah. go up. They're, they're, I think they were, the latest is they're, they're talking about putting a phone line in there so that they can talk to their parents and oh stuff. Oh, God, the poor kids. But the yeah. water can go up, and that's it. That's the limit of where they can go. Jeez. And, it, and it's to drill through the top, it's 300 metres, so you're looking at a 1,000 foot to drill. Um, here we go. Well, here's the thing. Uh, drilling into the chamber and extracting the group is an option, but a possible location for a way in has yet to be identified, and creating a shaft large enough to remove the boys, estimated to be half a mile underground, would take okay. a long time. Well, what you do, you start that now. You find that spot and you start digging now, so you've got that as an option. Yeah, I mean, it's not exactly a backward country. They're quite technically... Oh, it's they invented the lady boy. They, they are <laughs> primo, primo... Um, uh, uh, they're yeah. ahead of the curve. That's got me thinking. What was that coach doing down there with 12 boys? Oh, come on, Dion, no. They're on a school trip. They're, on a, they're, they're on a school trip. Well, I had none of that. I'm sure, I'm, I, honestly, I'm not, I'm not making light of the story. I'm not making light of the story at all. Oh, no, I, no, I, it's, it's fascinating, a, and it's as a dad, I, it's terrifying. I think it's going to have a good... Good ending. Oh, do you know what? I've got that vibe as well. I've got that vibe as well. Yeah, I really have. Yeah, it's going to be, I reckon, by... Christmas? Just after next weekend. All I right. really think they'll be out by then. It's going to be... It's going to be... We're, we're all going to be glued to the TV sets when that... When that they come out. I mean, uh, that, that reunion's going to be amazing. I mean, I saw... I saw a clip where they... Talking to some of the parents when they were first found and the... The parents were that happy just that they know their children are alive, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it was my son. I don't know, have you got 
your marriage. Have you got children yet? Yes, I have, yes, yes. And, uh, yeah, I saw a bit of your profile. Oh. I didn't realise you were a millionaire. Yes, I'm a million- uh, yes, I'm a millionaire with children. That's pretty good going, isn't it? It's not bad going, is it? Uh, Lad off the brick, Will. There we go, Dion. Lad off the brick, Well, thank you, mate. Moving on just so we can go to... Ray, good evening, Ray. Good evening. Good evening, Ray. What have you got for us? <laughs> A couple of things, a couple of quick things. First of all, um, could you please summarise what's gone on in the last four minutes? Because I was in holes, I didn't hear any of it. Uh, we spoke to Dion, um, he said the best way to kill someone is with a crossbow. I made an inappropriate joke about, um, cross-dressers and, uh, trans. Beautiful, thank you very much. And my, my next and final point is, um, regarding Catherine. Um, I've been obviously what, listening since the show's inception, just, is it about two and a half years now, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Can I ask your opinion? I, I believe in that time, yes. um, her potty yes. mouth has got worse and worse and worse. Hasn't it? Hasn't it just? <laughs> yeah. She was such a nice person. Wasn't she? she Wasn't she just? No. Now she's ridiculous. Yes. What, what would you like to see done to her, Ray? Well, I, I don't know. I think she's beyond help. Yeah, should we fire her? <laughs> We can't do that because she is a good part of the show. But right, uh, you're, you're bitter. I'm yours, Ray. Apparently, <laughs> Paul Ross has been stood in that doorway for the last two minutes. It's it's Sam typed up on my screen. I didn't see. I can't it's see. Like, it's like I've wandered into though. I love coming to a, a decompression chamber from outer space. I love just lurking there, waiting to see what's happening. You, a great, I must say, you always deliver a great show without well, any pressure. It's been a belter tonight. It's been all right. Isn't Talk it? about emotional range yeah. and what a show. Thank you, brother. You, you need to go and decompress somewhere. No, no, I know my place. Well, what you got for us tonight, Paul? Well, uh, loads of stuff on the blocks, but what I'm particularly looking forward to is, um, Prince Andrew actually did some work today. He went to Edinburgh. <laughs> Shut up, Possibly man. because there's a golf course up there, but he unveiled a statue to a remarkable man. He died a couple of years ago. Yes. I was meant to interview him four or five years ago. He wasn't oh. well enough. His name is Eric Brown. Yeah. His nickname was Winkle, because he's of that age. Yeah. He flew. He's a remarkable pilot. They've honoured him at Edinburgh Airport. He flew 487 different types of aircraft wow. in his career as a naval test pilot. An absolutely wow. remarkable, unsung hero. In the oh. in the year that the RAF celebrates its centenary, we are celebrating this <laughs> remarkable man. And it's great to go north of the border for once. Up how, at many, how many different types? 487. Of and the thing is, that doesn't include different marks within those aircraft. So he flew like the Hurricane 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, he flew jet that many different he, he started training in the 1930s. He went all the way to a plane, a supersonic plane that could have taken him into outer space Flipping in the course it. of one life. He's a remarkable man. Sadly, he's no longer with us, but we're paying tribute to him on the show to the Beautiful. Of course, and also to Thailand, for obvious reasons, going to India for the latest on their space race, and all the usual tosh as well. So you're ten seconds. What would you do with those kids in that cave? I'm erring on leave them in there for four months. Oh, I think you've got to, you, you, I mean, they've got to rescue them. They can give them a crash course in scuba training and do that kind of buddy breathing thing. Yeah. It's, I, 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 it's, I, it's such a Of course, you might have for the latest on Beautiful. That. I look forward to that. Paul Ross up next. We're back tonight at ten. Till then, from us, ta-ta. Thank you. Bye-bye. Talk radio. That, um... <laughs>